another Saturday in the SEC. That means tailgaters are up early, fans are trembling in excitement. As we go, another great showdown in Fayetteville. Coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium, the Auburn Tigers looking for a bounce back after a disappointing performance last week against Georgia. Sam Pittman continues to push this program forward here in Fayetteville. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, and what a matchup we have for you here today. Number 17, Arkansas, welcomes in four and two Auburn. Plenty of implications involved with this game, and we are pleased to bring it to you live here from Fayetteville. Hello and welcome as we get set for this action. We are excited for all of it. No Eagle, the coach, Rick Neuheisel. Aaron Murray, our quarterback, Jenny Dell, on the sidelines as well. And glad to have you along for the ride. So, Coach, we brought it up already, but the implications of the SEC West in particular are large in this well, one. Well, officially, the sun came up today in Fayetteville at 723. But the new dawn of this Razorback program comes in the form of Sam Pittman. He has instilled an all-in attitude. He's been carnival barking this week, working the fraternities and sororities. Expect this crowd to go hog wild today. Well, they know how big this game is. I mean, no one was really expecting Alabama to lose last week to AM, but it opened up the SEC West. It is a free-for-all, and goal number one of every single team in this league is get to Atlanta. Today marks a big game for both these ball teams. So I'm expecting a passionate game here on the field. And for the Razorbacks, if they can channel some of that offense from last week, they'll be in good shape. Record setting against Ole Miss, 676 total yards, 39 first downs, a school record, 51 points, most for them in an SEC game since 2016. And a big reason why was K.J. Jefferson. Coach Pittman knew when he got here he had to have a dual threat quarterback to make this thing go fast. He found him on. He's got a 6'3", 245 Battlestar Galactica in K.J. Jefferson. Last week, he threw for 326, ran for another 85, accounted for six touchdowns. He did everything but get the win at the game's conclusion. He is their straw that stirs the drink. Now it's time for the new Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. And Aaron, last week, it was the running game for Ole Miss. You'd expect that for Auburn. Well, Mike, Mike Bobo, if he wants to be a smart offensive coordinator, give the ball to Tank Bigsby. Last year in this game, 100. 46 yards really has been somewhat non-existent the past couple weeks. They got to get going. Hunter, 9.9 yards per carry. Arkansas has struggled against the run here of late. Auburn takes some pressure off the quarterback to run the football, Mike Bobo. Coming up, SEC matchup here in Fayetteville. Number 17, Arkansas welcomes in Auburn. Should be a fun one. Don't go anywhere on CBS. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Papa John's, Nissan, Twisted Tea Hard Ice Tea, and by The Home Depot. Just about set for kickoff, and here come the Razorbacks. We are expecting a sold-out crowd here at Razorback Stadium. And for more on the environment, we go down to the field with Jenny Dell. Yeah, well, after traveling for the last three weeks, these Arkansas fans are excited to be back here in their home stadium. The 11 a kicks, they're a little bit early. So Coach Pittman had a call to action. He wanted all these students to be here about an hour before kick. He even went out to the sororities and the fraternities this week, really trying to get the students out here. He wanted that ruckus environment. And head coach of the basketball team, Eric Musselman, getting involved as well. Slinging about a thousand of these breakfast burritos out to these hungry students getting their day off, right, guys? Burrito oh. Bonanza. Oh, nice. We got a second chance. Let's see if she can. Oh, that was nice power from Great Jenny. Great form, Jenny. Great form. Beautifully done, Sam Pittman, knowing exactly what he's supposed to do. Get everybody out and about because this is a huge game in the SEC West. Both 4-2 and two overall. Arkansas with those two losses in conference, but Auburn still at that one loss. They're still very much in play. Well, there's absolutely no question that this conference, this side of it at least, is wide open because Alabama lost last week. And let's not forget that, that game later on CBS, Georgia versus Kentucky on the East. It's a big day in the SEC right now. And this one on the West right now, we've been saying it. It is monstrous with that Alabama loss last week. Vito Calvaruso will send it deep for Arkansas. We are underway as Pritchett lets it sail 
through the end zone, and it is a touchback. Starting at the 25, our lineups are presented by Papa John's, and this Auburn offense once again led by the man under center, Bo Nix, who's looking for a bounce-back performance. It is a safe bet that Bo Nix's first words were war eager. I mean, he wears this these colors on his sleeve, but he's got to be more consistent as a passer, and he needs more help from his receivers. Six drops last week gave them no shot to beat the number one team in the land in Georgia. By the way, Auburn won the toss and elected to receive this kick. Remember last week, it was a 17-play drive that resulted in three points. They start in the year on first down and 10 with Nix. He's complete on the sideline. Kobe Hudson turns it upfield and is about nine yards, about a yard short of a first down for this Auburn Tigers offense. Well, Coach, you brought up the drops that have plagued this offense this season. Big drops and big moments, but Mike Bobo didn't want to show that. He wanted to show those guys making catches and plays against the number one team in the country in Georgia last week. Build their confidence, make the catches, because he believes they can. Jarquez Hunter, the running back in the game, and there's some movement at the line early. This has been a problem for Arkansas, but this one looks like it's going the other way against Auburn. Well, start on the offense, number 71. That's a five-yard penalty, and it will remain second down. An Arkan fan, this is why Sam Pittman is slinging burritos before the game. <laughs> get the fans excited, fill their bellies, get them juiced up. This is what happened to their offense. Arkansas, go back a few weeks ago against the University of Georgia early. Get the fans involved and help your defense out. Well, as Brandon Council called for the penalty, so it's second down and six. They go to the ground with Tank Bigsby, and it's a first down. This is exactly what we expected out of Auburn to keep it on that ground game, and this Arkansas defense is going to have to account for it. Jalen Catalan, their safety, is not available today. He's got a shoulder issue, so look for number two, Miles Slusher, a sophomore safety. See if Auburn tries to target him with a uh, couple of deep shots here early in the game to test where he is in terms of this depth chart and in this secondary. Three receivers set on first down and ten. Nix flushed down immediately and then completes on the run. Demetrius Robertson out of bounds and a fresh set. Yeah, what an absolute dime. This is not an easy throw, but you talk to the coaching staff and everyone pregame was saying how athletic Bo Nix is. And we know this, but he can make these throws in and outside the pocket. Great job dragging the toe. Easy first down. You know what's interesting, Coach, right now? Arkansas defensively, we're seeing a four down front, something they usually don't do much. Bigsby the back, approaching midfield, Auburn. Nick's in the pocket, zips one, and completes his tight end. Luke Deal is dragged down after a modest gain. Bo Nix, three for three in this opening drive. They've given him some easy throws early here. Big tight end just sits down in the zone. He puts it on the money. This is how you get rhythm as a passer. Bo Nix, high 50% in his career. If he can get that closer to 70, Aaron, this offense will start clicking. Second down and six into Razorback territory already on this first drive. Swing it to the running back, Bigsby, who finds some space and explodes forward to the 40-yard line. Nice, easy completions, and most importantly, get Tank Bigsby involved. And the run game has been a struggle for this offense. I mentioned the fact that Arkansas wants to stop the run. This is a team primarily that wants to be a three-down front. They brought some bigger bodies in, but you still got to find a way. Great job by Mike Bobo again, his running back some touches. Bo Nix doing Bo Nix things early. Has the most attempts without interception, or rather one interception this year. Goes the deep ball here, and he's got a man wide open. Javarius Johnson for a touchdown. Auburn strikes first. What an impressive drive by the Auburn quarterback, Bo Nix. Five for five on the drive, and, and he was beautiful, Aaron, in not trying to overthrow the ball. When you get an open receiver, put a little air under it, let him run under it. Yeah, and the safety, the play action, the threat of the run, you saw the middle safety come up, and that's all Bo Nix is looking at. You want to get a little feisty in the run game, I trust the speed. We always say airtime, coach, airtime, airtime, airtime. My receiver is faster than the defensive back. Anders Carlson on for the extra point. Best kick in the country, knocks it right through. 7-0, Auburn, just a couple minutes in. And what a great job by Mike Bobo. Easy completions, get the defense to suck up, and then the home run shot from Bo Nix for the touchdown.
Bo Nix on that opening drive. Five for five, 72 passing yards in his 50th career total touchdown passing Cam Newton. Well, we talked, Noah, about Miles Slusher in his first start this season. He's going to get a little nosy. He's seeing a little run fake in there. You can see the receiver get behind him. You'd love to have this throw, wouldn't you, Aaron? Well, this is the design. You got so much action going on in the backfield. You got a jet sweep. You got a play action of the running back. The safety's trying to figure out who actually has the football. And then, like I said earlier, you talk about air time. As soon as the safety's feet stop, you just got to throw it up. Let him run underneath. And you know, we harped on this last week. Touch with the football from Bo Nix. Great touch on that drive with some of those passes. So now let's see if Arkansas can find that offensive momentum from last week's loss to Ole Miss. They put up 51 points in that game, and they will start from their own 25. Our lineups are presented by Papa John's, and K.J. Jefferson is the man that's going to lead this attack for the Razorbacks, and rightfully so. I cannot wait to watch him out here this afternoon. These are the moments he's built for. Had a tremendous game last week, brought them all the way down there, and had an opportunity to win it. He's a big physical runner, and the passing game's only getting better and better each and every week. Jefferson got the score and started last week at Ole Miss with a five-yard touchdown run. He had six total touchdowns on the day. And let's see what he can cook up on this first Arkansas drive. Dominique Johnson, the running back to start. They've got a great running attack. And they will go to the ground with Johnson, who finds a small hole and dives forward for a couple. Looking at this Razorback offense overall. Well, it's a little bit of game, but where's Waldo for this Auburn defense? they got to find number 16, Traylon Burks. He is an absolute go-to guy. They look for him. He's got 29 catches on the season. He's a weapon. Keep it with Johnson, and Auburn's defense bottles him up. A number of white jerseys in the area, and this is a prove-it game for this unit. Well, the secondary, Pritchett, really struggled last week against the deep ball versus the University of Georgia. And this Arkansas team, especially on the first time, is going to take some shots down the field. We'll see how this secondary holds up. This is a third down and three for Arkansas. Jefferson will keep it himself, and surges forward. Got the first down and more towards midfield. K.J. Jefferson, so difficult to bring down. We talked about it in the open, 85 yards rushing last week. This is why he draws comparisons of the great Cam Newton. Fresh set of downs, they'll swing it quickly. That is the go-to guy, Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks, a weapon oh. above all. And this is what's so easy for the quarterback. You want to load the box and give me numbers on the outside? I'm going to give it to my man, Traylon Burks. Let him make a couple guys miss. When I stepped out of bounds just a hair bit earlier. Great block it on the outside. And if you're going to get a three over two offense, three receivers, defense, two DBs, they're going to take that every day with these quick, easy bubbles. It's a glorified run play. First down and 10 from the 36. Jefferson goes back to the air, sling it quickly, and looks like it was caught by Tyson Morris. That's a difficult catch to make, is coming in like a bullet. Chandler Wooten, one of the captains of this Auburn defense. Talking about this uh, Arkansas offense led by Kendall Bryles, their offensive coordinator, the son of Art Bryles, this is all a math equation. You just look where the numbers are. If they go out and cover us down and play with high safeties, we're going to run the ball. If they come into the box, we're going to spit it out there to these uh, really good players when they get the ball under their arms. True freshman A.J. Green has come in as the running back and will get the carry. He's got a lot of speed as he looks to bounce it to the outside goes through one tackler and gets it to third and very short here for Arkansas. Well these are the guys that are going to have to make the plays for this Auburn defense. It's going to be the safeties because they understand too if we're going to have a light box a 4-2 box Arkansas has the number advantage that means our safeties have to fill downhill and you get to these third and medium situations this is when KJ can run the football so what do you do defensively to try to slow them down? Could be four down territory as well. This would be about a 46-yard field goal attempt should they get bottled up. Just Just down and three. Just doing the math here. Jefferson out of the gun. Man in motion, Jackson. Jefferson will keep, will fire, and will connect. Traylon Burks again, and he's got plenty of space and yards for a first down. You want to know where's Waldo? There he was. They're going to find every which way to get this youngster touches. Give him a blow right now. 
but it gets the job done. Keeps this drive alive inside the 25-yard line. First and 10 as Jefferson has completed his first three attempts. This is the only FBS team with three players with over 300 rushing yards. Jefferson, Sanders, Smith have all done it already. Jefferson again. This time he will give it off, and there is nowhere to run for A.J. Green. Leota among the first ones there. Zion Puckett as well in the backfield. And that's one way to eliminate the zone read to your side. You bring an edge rusher with a defensive end and a linebacker. Quarterback really has nowhere to go. You can't take it because there's a linebacker to account for him. And obviously you give it. You just hope you're running back and get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 12. Jefferson has to get out of the pocket. Oh, nearly intercepted. Roger McCreary had an opportunity to come away with a huge play here in the first quarter. Instead, it's third and 12. When Kendall Browse looks at this play on film with K.J. Jefferson, he's going to say, when you step up in there, you also remember you're that big-time athlete. Go ahead and run. He ends up making the throw ill-advised. There was lots of grass to make the first down with his legs. Arkansas has really struggled on third and long, 37-plus. They're four of 32, sixth worst in the FBS. Here's a third and 12 knocking on the door of the red zone. Jackson in motion. Circles back around as Jefferson looks, surveys, and it is Jackson. Let's see if he can make something happen. No, he can't. Cannot make magic out of a nothing. And instead, it will likely be a field goal for Arkansas. And great coverage on the back end. They play a little too high shell. No one's open. Obviously, love the patience of KJ getting through his read to find the running back. But bend but don't break early on for this offer defense, forcing the field goal. Cam Little, the true freshman, will come on. Eight of eight to start the season. He's now nine for 11 with his longest at 46. This one from 44 yards out. Little. Just sneaks it in there, and Arkansas responds with points. May have been hoping for that touchdown. Had a nice drive stalled just shy of the red zone, but Little makes it count with a long field goal, and yeah, put that thing away, Cam Little. 7-3, Auburn in front early. Queen Latifah is back and unstoppable as the Equalizer. Don't miss a new episode of the Equalizer tomorrow on CBS. So Arkansas responds to that six-play, 75-yard Auburn opening drive with Bo Nix, a perfect five for five. K.J. Jefferson looking solid. They get three points back. And Auburn holding that four-point lead, looking to add to it here. Place is certainly filled up here at Razorback Stadium. This is what Sam Pittman was hoping for. First game back at home in a couple of weeks and wanted that type of vibe that they got in Athens playing against the now number one team in the country, Georgia. Let's see if this is returnable. It is not. And so again, it will be 25-yard line start for Auburn. Looking at the keys to the game for both teams here. Well, Auburn needs to run the football, get Tank going, and they did a great job in the first drive, running in, out of the backfield, catching the ball, and then make K.J. beat you as a quarterback, just like that first drive, get to third and long situations. For Arkansas, Barry Odom talked about limiting explosives. That didn't happen. They gave up a big play there on that first drive. And the second thing is for Kendall Bryles, stay out of third and long. They're 4 of 32, now 4 of 33 on third and seven plus. Tank Bigsby, the running back on first down and 10 as Auburn starts this drive at their own 25. Nicks again. He stays perfect. John Samuel Shanker, one of his favorite targets, who just kind of wiggles forward for a first down. It's just interesting. We brought it up during the first series with Auburn. Arkansas is going to a four down front. They flirted with this a little bit against the University of Georgia, trying to stop the run game. But that means, as we know, less guys in coverage on the back end. And right now, some big holes for some of these receivers and tight ends to make plays. Auburn coaching staff preach competition throughout the week. And for Bo Nix, it looks like it's paid off. Big speed turns the legs for two. John Ridgeway, the first one there. It's also an interesting move by Barry Odom to go to four down because they're without Markel Utzi today. The transfer from Mizzou, they don't have as much depth on that defensive front. It makes uh, It's a curious move to go down to four down rather than the three down that they've been playing with. Well, I think, Coach, it's just the fact they've been absolutely gashed on the ground between Georgia and Ole Miss last week. Enough's enough. We need more big bodies in there, even if it's backups, to slow down Auburn and trying to run the football. Robertson in motion on second down and eight. 
Nix on the bootleg. Looking on the run, fires in his first incompletion. He was looking for Bigsby, but what a play. Miles Slusher, the replacement coming in to deflect the pass. That's a great job staying home defensively for Arkansas. Forcing Nix to continue to roll out, and nothing's open. And now we're feeling the energy. Now the burritos have settled in. <laughs> I don't know. That's protein, an oxymoron. The protein. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Carb load up before these big games. You're ready to go. Well, Bo Nix has looked settled in. Let's see how he does. First pressure situation really on third and eight. Shy of the 50. Nix to the air. Nix lost one. Complete over the middle. Losing his footing. Landon King. And he can't get there. Looked like King at space. Fouché was among the several red jerseys in the area. This is what West Coast offensive coaches call a drive route. He went to the right guy, but he came a little late. And that receiver should have just sat down a little bit so that he could have gotten north and south for the first down. So to bring up fourth down and four, and Oscar Chapman, who was busy last week against Georgia, will come out to boot it away. Nathan Perotti back deep to return for Arkansas. Chapman does get it off. Perotti backpedaling. Let this sail over his head and into the end zone. He's got another touchback with 5.38 remaining in this first quarter. Back and forth we go. Arkansas's defense gets the stop they were looking for, and we'll see if they can take advantage next on CBS. to go here in the first quarter. Let's go to our T-Mobile hometown connection in Jenny Dell. Yeah, for KJ Jefferson, it all began in the small town of Sardis, Mississippi. Population is under 2,000. KJ, a family man and self-proclaimed mama's boy, had a truly special bond with his mom, Katori, who is in better health after suffering a stroke during KJ's junior year in high school. The two united for an emotional embrace last week after Arkansas fell 52-51 to Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi. That's just 35 minutes from his home. Guys, KJ told me his mom has no problem holding him accountable for what he does on the field. He said, I just want to win for her. Also has no problem showing him what's what on the basketball court, from what I hear. First down and 10, they go to the ground. Traylon Smith, the experience back and showing some of it. Shifty on his way to a first down. By Darius Knighton, the one to trip him up. And there is Katori Moore, KJ Jefferson's mother, said that the first time he finally beat her was when, <laughs> Coach? 14 years old. Katori wasn't playing. An awesome basketball player. And how about an awesome throw and catch? Tyson Morris was there for the grab, but KJ Jefferson is slinging it early. Uh, he just he looks confident in the pocket. His, his footwork is on time. It's in rhythm. It's very patient, allowing his receivers to create the separation at the top of their routes. And a right back to Smith, who finds a hole. Smith to the outside. Stutter steps, a little red light, green light towards first down yardage. Arkansas. Add, uh, runs for over 200 yards a game. They do so via bone, the zone scheme, and they also do things with the power scheme, with the gap scheme. That was gap. Keep it with Smith. The hot hand stumbles forward for a gain of four. This Auburn defense looking to settle. Going they tempo got that here. This is, right this is this one point. of Bryles' real weapons right here. Going fast. You can see Auburn trying to get lined up. Rocket Sanders, another talented true freshman in the game at running back, and finally we'll let the play here. Some late substitutions, it looked like, from Auburn's side. They do give it to Sanders, originally a slot receiver, but you're seeing the talent that he possesses as a running back. Marcus Harris ran into him, and Sanders just kept the feet going. Well, there's such a, there's such a hesitation right now defensively. Anytime there's a zone read S play for this Arkansas offense, because at the end of the day, KJ is just as good as a runner. He is a running back that also can throw the ball deep down the field. So you really you're slowing down being able to hit the hole defensively to make the tackle on these running backs. And right now for Arkansas, when you spread it out like this, if there's a light box, this is this is prime go to be ready for a, a possible quarterback draw situation. Totally agree. Five wide receivers on third down and three. Jefferson initially looked like he was going to tuck. Now he'll throw for the end zone. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Warren Thompson, who had a touchdown last week against Ole Miss, could not reel it in. Watch this official down at the end. He wants to say touchdown. His hands go to the air, and then he goes, nah, you were out. 
Watch him. There they go. Oh, no. Out of bounds. Looked awfully close, though. That last foot just barely came off when the, the ball reached his grasp. And, and I, I, I really don't get the, the play call there. I mean, you had the box to run the ball with KJ there. Take the first down. Uh, unless you thought you were going to go for it on fourth down, get the first and move the chains. Reed Bauer will punt it back to Demetrius Robertson, who called for a fair catch and makes it at the seven-yard line. First down carry for Jarquez Hunter, who found some space and picks up eight deep in their own territory. Auburn, who has had a great first drive and then a stalling second drive, kind of like last week. Well, they're spreading the love right now. Seven receptions by seven different receivers. Bo Nix, he just looks more comfortable, Coach. His feet are a little bit slowed down from last week. He's getting through his reads. High formation on second and three. Pitch it to Hunter again, and he is stood up short of the first down. Arkansas's defense and Hudson Clark make a play. It's a great job by this Arkansas secondary coming up and stopping this play, a, a perimeter play. This is what you need from your secondary coming up, bringing the wood. R48 boss. I, you know, that's, that's something that we ran back in the day at Georgia. When's the last time you saw a fullback at Auburn University? Mike Bobo with his fingerprints yes. on the offense. And once again, so proud of you, Murray. You remember, remember in the plays? I do. I was showing some old school footwork before the game. Third down and one, and Hunter upended in the backfield. What a stop by Arkansas to bring up fourth down. And now we'll see, did the ball maybe come loose? Razorbacks think that they have it. Jashad Stork was there. And let's see, did, did Hunter keep this ball in his grasp? I'm not sure he did. And Stewart, number 58, blasts right by the defensive end. Being able to hit the running back in the backfield, and we're going to get a great view here. When does this ball come out? And that's a fumble. No, Coach, that is a fumble. 100% a fumble. That's when you just need to let the play play out. We'll see if we get the uh, go to the replay here. I guess maybe it was, can we see who recovered that fumble? There we go. So Auburn actually looks like they may have called a timeout. Let's see what Brian Harson is trying to discuss back and forth with our officiating crew. Well, the question here is, did the whistle blow? Because when you're in the grass, it can, you can get the whistle blowing, meaning that it becomes the inadvertent whistle sure. right where the play is dead. Because it... The previous play is under further review. Auburn is not charged with a timeout. This is a booth initiated review. So let's make sure we've got all our I's dotted, our T's crossed, and bring in the great Gene Steratore. Gene, what do you see? At first, I was waiting to see if they had ruled forward progress, which I would have disagreed with. And then as we saw, Auburn called the timeout, and now they are initiated a booth review. The next aspect we have to watch is, is there a clear recovery? by the defense on the play by video review or if they made that decision whenever they ruled on that live on the field of play. That will be the two things they'll be looking at right now. It's clearly out and then as we follow this high end zone look right now it appears to me that Arkansas has recovered but an awful lot of things happen down there in the pile guys whenever there's a lot of bodies on top of each other. It's, it's, it's pretty nasty down there Gene. It ain't, it ain't <laughs> fun. You don't want to be down there. Lots of grabbing and pulling and what's puzzling and it's not necessarily a Gene issue is why Auburn would call timeout. They might have gotten this plate snapped. I, I, that's what I was wondering too. Just punt the football and, and punt the move football on. And, and beat in the review. Guys it looks like Grant Morgan 31 in red, who is the captain and the heart and soul of this team. Let's listen in. I don't hear any whistles. I know the no. crowd's going crazy. That's, and maybe that's a fumble, out, and that is Arkansas football in my estimation. 
I guess we had a chance to talk to Grant Morgan yesterday. He was great, by the way, and, and he just wanted to reiterate time and time again how proud he is to play for this to this program, how proud Sam Pittman has made everybody to play for this program, and, and you could feel the excitement, not just for this year, but for years to come. Well, he, he talked about, too, this week, fighting the After edge. After the review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down. Wow. Wow. You may see some flying burritos from the stands at these refs <laughs> right now. After that one, I, I mean, I don't know. Well, I, I, a clear fumble looked like Arkansas got it. He, he said confirmed, so obviously Auburn must have recovered the fumble. Yeah. So it'll be fourth down and one, and after all this, Auburn not only gets the ball back, but is not charged with a timeout with the booth-triggered review. So they will punt it away from deep in their own territory regardless. And Arkansas expects to get some solid field position out of the ordeal. But Sam Pittman and the Razorbacks have to be disappointed. Be interesting to see if they ruled it a fumble or not. And then, obviously, if it was a fumble, it had to have been recovered by Hopper. Chapman will punt it. Perotti will receive it. First quarter. It is a short punt from Chapman and out of bounds right near midfield. Great start for Arkansas. It was almost an instant red zone opportunity. Let's get Gene back in here. So, Gene, when it's all said and done, what you make of this whole ordeal? Well, what you want to make sure of first, and I don't know that the referee did this, is make a declaration of what the ruling on the field was. Was the ruling on the field down by contact? So what did we basically confirm? Was the ruling on the field fumble recovered by Auburn? Uh, when he came out and said the ruling on the field was confirmed, uh, I would like to know what the initial ruling was. One of our replays show that the referee definitely throws his beanbag, so he, he signaled himself that there was a fumble, but I don't see a down by contact, and I saw a clear recovery by Arkansas there, guys, in my opinion. Instead, it's a first down and 10, and it'll be a first down or make it a second down and 11 after a loss of one from Jefferson, who's tripped up immediately in the backfield. And that's going to be the interesting matchup right now when anytime Jefferson decides to take off these linebackers, the Kobe McLean be able to make tackles. Rocket Sanders. Rocket Sanders. Enough said. And this offensive line, the double teams in the zone attack, being able to get to the second level. Look at the hole. The big uglies up front are able to create. Sanders had 139 yards on 17 carries last week at Ole Miss. This time, Jefferson will keep. Runs into a wall. About a yard past the line of scrimmage. Kobe McLean came in and crashed his course. And talking to Kendall Bryles yesterday, how much do you want to run your quarterback? He said we'd like to, you know, keep him clean as much as we can, but he is an absolute focal point of this offense. You're seeing that early today. Last play of the first quarter here. And it all Sanders again. Burst forward. They'll bring up third down and manageable as we start the second. Auburn got on the board first. Arkansas responded. And we are underway. Away and running here in Fayetteville. A big game with implications in the SEC West. 7-3 Tigers after one on CBS. What I've learned in my short time with CBS is when Gene Steratore asks, he shall receive. The ruling on the field was forward progress was stopped right here as Hunter was fighting for yardage. So that's what the ruling that was confirmed. Either way, it's now third down and four for Arkansas. And they're not going anywhere. Rocket Sanders couldn't find any space. Smoke Monday, a big play in the backfield, and now it's decision time on fourth and short. Well, it was a thought of four down territory there, but when you lose yardage on the play, I agree this one. you got to bring the special teams unit out, see if you can make the field goal. You're able to get a few yards on it, then go for it on fourth down. This is going to be a long one, though. Cam Little. Watching him, six yarder. watching him in pregame, he was knocking these through. And he was comfortable from much this distance. This one is 53 yards away. Straight on, though, for the true freshman. Little pulls it. Wide right. No good. 
That's like my wedge. He caught it a little fat. <laughs> Just dies to the right a little bit. Coach is being modest. You know, watching plays. You know, watching that uh, that that call by the officials, that uh, inadvertent whistle call, that brings up some haunting memories for these Razorback fans. Yeah, last year during this ball game, the was it a fumble or not? Both decided to spike it backwards. Which is a fumble. Which is a fumble. Should have been a fumble. Fouché jumps on it, <laughs> but they said he didn't make a continuous football move. It all led to that. Anders Carlson. I told you it's hard to be a coach, Aaron. Oof. It's hard to be a ref. Extremely. Bigsby on the pitch. Burst of speed forward. And a gain of five on first down. I mean, just old school football right now from Mike Bobo. We, we saw it in the last possession. Moving your tight end, the fullback, the ability to run the football, get some big bodies in there. I mean, that's one of the keys. Get to third, second, third, and manageable for Bo Nix. And we've seen nice, easy passes for him for the majority of this first half. Bixby has been heavily involved early. This is something that we expected to see, and nothing's going to change quite yet as Bixby can get to the outside. Pushed out of Browns at around the 40-41 yard line. Bumper Pool and Hayden Henry both there to make sure he couldn't get anywhere further. It's interesting. Auburn started the game with eight passes in their first ten plays. Now they're clearly trying to establish a running game, and it's just not getting on track. Credit Arkansas defense for that. Big play, noise abound here at Razorback Stadium. Third down and five. From the 41, Nick's empty, goes to the air, lofts it over the middle, wide open for a first down and more, Landon King. Two big catches last week, and he's been heavily involved once again here in Fayetteville. And this is the weakness of this Arkansas defense in the seams. We've seen it over and over in weeks past. Skinny posts, slants, you saw a stop route right there. Getting in there, just sitting down at the sticks, and being able to get the first down. Now they get it into Razorback territory. 16 plays, nine of them pass, seven rushes. It's been a balanced attack to go back to the air. Another completion for Nix, who's been really looking for his tight ends. This time it's Deal, who will get it to second and short. Just an old West Coast concept. You get somebody to come right over the ball. If they squeeze from either linebacker, you go opposite that, that linebacker to the hook. The tight end went wide open right there in the middle. Easy five-yard completion. Nick's only that one incompletion, now a second down and four play action, and perfect timing. Shedrick Jackson fighting for yardage inside the 25. Fresh set of downs as we go down to Jenny Dell on the Auburn offense. Yeah, there, there's been an issue with drops for this Auburn team. So Sean Shivers told me that it's simply a lack of focus. I spoke with Bo Nix, and he said they changed up a few things in practice this week. They worked on more roots and air with body presence, so more DBs around to prepare for that in-game field, guys. Well, Jenny, right now, there's just a sense of confidence, it looks like, and it, it just feels like between Bo and his receivers at the moment. Routes are Chris, very defined for their quarterback. Another Georgia formation for you here, Aaron. And the give is to Bigsby following his tight end, Shanker, just trying to shed tacklers left and right, and he's inside the red zone. Well, it's funny, Coach. I asked Coach Bobo before the game. I was doing our old-school 143 bench footwork, trying to relive the glory days. <laughs> I, was I watched like, it I was down like, there. I was like, have you made Bo Nix do the 143? It's three in a wheel to the left, and not yet. One day, I, maybe by end of the season. I watched you down there. I'm not sure I had a scholarship for that guy. I was uh, my elbows are in I had one back in the day, though. You broke my heart. <laughs> Second down and five. Give to Bigsby. He bounces it to the outside. Bigsby looking for the pylon, and he's pushed out of bounds at the one. A touchdown saving tackle from Simeon Blair. This will be interesting because he puts the ball on his left arm here at the conclusion to try to get it over the sticks. You can see him holding it like a loaf of bread. <laughs> First and goal, and it back to Bigsby. Can he pay it off? The push, not this time, he's short. Auburn going quick tempo here. Weren't interested in seeing if Bigsby got that ball over the line. Bigsby starting to find his rhythm. Uh, Six bring, rushes, 37 yards. And they're bringing in some big, big bodies right now for Auburn. If the running game can finish it off. 
mean, you're at the half yard line here. Just give it to them and let them. He had two, three downs. It's also a place for quarterback run. Nix hasn't run the ball yet today, although I formation. Aaron Murray in his glory. Hand it off, Tank. He throws his forward, and he's in. Touchdown, Auburn. Just love the balance of the attack on this drive. A little run, a little pass. Bo's looking good. We're going to see if Tank is able to cross the goal line. And it appears from there he does. This is one of the keys to the game. Get Tank Bigsby going. Had a tremendous game last year versus Arkansas. 140 yards rushing. And cap that drive off with a powerful run to get in the end zone. Sixth rushing touchdown of the season for Tank Bixby. Had one last week as well. We're shedding, shedding tacklers left and right. His 11th of his career already in his sophomore season. And it brings out Andres Carlson for the extra point. Trying to make this an 11-point lead for the Tigers on the road. Carlson, all SEC first team last year's brother Daniel with the Vegas Raiders, also an All-American at Auburn, and he sticks it. 14-3, there is a flag, looked like some movement up front as well. A couple of minutes into this second quarter. Yes, that penalty is declined, the try is good. So the try is good from Anders Carlson with the offsides on the Razorbacks defense. Tate Bigsby, sixth touchdown of the season, puts Auburn up the left. Nine plays, 65 yards in just over four minutes, and it was pretty much all Tank Bixby for the score for Auburn. You can see the edge defender right here gets beat to the outside. He has got to keep that to his inside help to his other red hat help friends. He doesn't do it. Bixby gets 17 yards down to the one. It ends up being an Auburn touchdown. So let's see if this Arkansas offense can come alive. 51 points in the loss last week at Ole Miss. Went for two to try to win the game. And it was really the second half, 37 in that second half. And they will start at the 25 here. Now let's send it back to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for a Jeep update. All right, Noah, Ed Orgeron and LSU with their backs against the wall for the annual tussle with the Gators. And Tyrion Davis-Price completes a 13-play, 90-yard drive with a touchdown. They have a 7-6 lead, and all shoes have stayed on so far. I'll see you with BJ in Houston, not at halftime. All right, Adam, LSU looking to get off the schneid a little bit here. Four of the last five games against ranked teams have not gone in their direction. Remember, it was Auburn two weeks ago going to Death Valley, getting their first win there in quite some time. And they're going to look to channel some of that magic and energy, but Arkansas with a chance to draw closer on this drive. Let's see what K.J. Jefferson has up his sleeve. We've got movement early. Talked about it earlier, but Arkansas has struggled with penalties for most of the season. All start on the offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, it remains first down. Bo Limmer, redshirt sophomore from Tyler, Texas. You, know, you go back to, you see the ball control right now, fairly even, but the penalties, 8.8 .8 per game this season. A little bit better last week, only four, but the previous games, 10 versus AM, 13 versus Georgia. You can't put yourself in these situations. Set a man in motion, it's Traylon Smith as Jefferson rolls out of the pocket, lets it fly, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Burks. And just, and just a layers route to the right. Burks with a tremendous route, and you just got to be able to drive this throw on his chest. K.J. Jefferson wants this ball back. He's got a wide open Traylon Burks. He's just got to relax and let this ball underneath his face mask, and he's going to have a big play. Let's say, why did he try to catch that one-handed? Well, he's got massive hands as Smith has a couple of yards. It'll bring up another third and long. And this is what Auburn wants. One of the goals make K.J. Jefferson beat you from the pocket, being a quarterback in these third and long situations. Three of 33 now for the season. Third down and eight. Four wide receiver set for Jefferson. Jefferson looks, fires, complete space in front for Morris, and he's finally tripped up past.
past the 45-yard line. A nice rocket from Jefferson. Wooten makes the play for Auburn. Zion Puckett, the Auburn defender, makes a gamble here, doesn't get it done. Gives up the big play, first down Arkansas. And with it, Jefferson goes to play action. Stays in the pocket, looking poised, and throws it away. You know, hit an opportunity on that one, one-on-one -on -one the slot with his guy, Traylon Burks, and that's what they want to do. Anytime you get a first down, it's shot time. Let's, let's push the ball vertically down the field. Didn't feel too comfortable with it, decides to try and check it down. Wisely throws the ball out of bounds. Offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles told us that really the biggest key for Jefferson has just been his increased confidence throughout the year. Had a slow start, was overthinking a little bit as Smith is bottled up after a short game. That was confusing. The official was trying to stop the play to let the uh, Auburn defender get off the field, and they end up running it anyway. You can see him coming up. The defense is allowed to substitute if offense does as well, and Arkansas trying to sneak a little fastball right there. Another third and long at third and eight, just shy of midfield. Jefferson with plenty of time will tuck and run now. Jefferson has first down yards, and he's tripped up. There is a flag on the field, but a nice decision there from the quarterback as Jacoby McLean finally came in to trip him down. Yeah, we're going to get Paul's going to be defensive holding, so that the play will stand. And this is what we've been looking for from the big fella, Aaron, right? Yeah, you'll see the pad, the holding call right now. That smoke Monday, number 21. Who there is no foul on the play for holding. It is a first down, Arkansas. That's called having a conversation after. It said he, it wasn't a hold, it was a chuck, and it turns out it was, uh, they say, no harm, no foul. It was smoke taking off some uh, some anger from last week's targeting call. That's what that exactly was. Exactly it. Had that targeting call against Stetson Bennett right near the goal line. Missed the entire second half of the game. Rocket Sanders back in the game. He's got big playability anytime he's on the field. It's a fresh set of downs inside Auburn territory. Let's see what Jefferson goes to here. Hands it off for Sanders. Keeps the legs moving and ends up picking up a couple extra yards, about five total. Looked like he was stopped after one. And, and you're seeing right now, we got a defender injured on the play, but the secondary for Auburn trying to hold their water as much as possible, give a two-shell look, and then rotate to a single high to get an extra defender in the box. K.J. Jefferson and his coach having a conversation right now over what to do. K.J. Jefferson putting on a cape, see if he can do it for the Hogs. Good news, Marquise Burks walking off the field on his own power. The senior from Chicago leaves this Auburn defense with two forced fumbles on the year back to the medical tent. But got up, walked off, jogged off, it, in fact, off the field. And the Arkansas faithful looking for this team to get back in the win column after back-to-back -back losses. Started 4-0 with the big wins over Texas and A&M. Losing to Georgia and Ole Miss on the road. Thursday. Have you heard about the new comedy Ghosts? Critics call it frightfully funny, hilariously spooky, and falls funniest. So, prepare to be scared funny with a brand new episode of Ghosts, Thursday, 9, 8 central, here on CBS. Second down and eight. For K.J. Jefferson, Rocket Sanders in the backfield. Arkansas looking to draw a closer man in motion, Blake Kern. Jefferson rolling, firing, completing. Looking sharp, trailing Burks. He says he always has it in the back of his mind. He knows that Burks has a mismatch in some way, shape, or form. Well, similar to the play that start the drive, you're going to have a layers S concept on the right, and, and great job just sitting in the hole, very friendly for his quarterback. And he knew KJ wasn't going to miss that one on the roll to his right. So first down and 10. Midway through this second quarter. Burks the man in motion. Jefferson pumps. Now he'll tuck it and try to escape. And does. Turns it upfield and turns a loss into a gain. Derek Hall finally gets him out of bounds. Watch where's Waldo. Built different. Traylon Burks, who is likely going to be an early draft pick. Strong, big. Kendall Bryles said he is on the border of being a generational type of talent because of that size and skill. Do you think 
our maxes could reach what he does on no. a squat and bench. No. Us, us three to combine. I'm not, no. I'm, not adding, I'm not adding much to that. I'm just going to be honest with you. Neither am I. What do you think I'm doing Don't here? Don't put the pressure on me here. I have a strong voice, nothing else. <laughs> Jefferson up the gut. And to be about a half yard shy of that first down. It'll bring up fourth and very short. Look for, and here's that decision. Look for some tempo here. Fourth and short. They've made the decision. They're going. Kendall Bryles getting that signaling quickly. Might get slowed down by a measurement here. Some administration. Right, they're going to call it fourth down. Here we go. So fourth and one from the Auburn 18. Jefferson, a big body. Arkansas, four of six on fourth down this season. This is what's called a sugar huddle. They line up really close. They'll come out, get right to the line. Sanders stays in at 225 pounds. Jefferson gives to Sanders. Did he get there is the question. It is going to be awfully close based on the spot. Zacoby McLean and Smoke Monday were there in a blink. Well, it was Marcus Harris, number 50, who really blows up the center. And he's able to force the running back to bounce to the outside. And instead of having Jefferson try to surge forward, they go to the true freshman running back. One-on-one. -on -one. Who can create pressure? Watch him dive. Take two offensive linemen on. Forcing the running back to bounce to the right. We'll see how close this one is. Great effort on both sides of the football. It looked like a favorable spot. Just short. Can't get much <laughs> Game closer. of inches, boys. Holy smokes. Game of inches. Auburn makes the stop. It's a turnover on downs for Arkansas. What a stand by this Tigers defense. It has been a bend but don't break kind of afternoon to start this game for the Auburn defense. Arkansas has moved the ball, just struggling as they pass the 50 yard line to be able to punch it in. I mean, coach, I wouldn't mind there just to get the quarterback under center and just. The previous play is under review. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line again. And that's the main question, right? KJ Jefferson's big body runs off, and generally you put him right under center. You've got inches to get. Instead, you hand it off out of the gun. It's interesting also, as you watch that Arkansas front line up, the right guard and right tackle were a little bit off the line of scrimmage. They could have crowded it a little bit more and made those collisions happen. And as a game of inches, those inches matter. Mm -hmm. I just have never been a big fan of the, the, the situation like that being in the gun. Let's see what Gene thinks. Gene, this one is awfully close. What have you seen? It's really close. What I initially look at is where did they set this box and the yard the line to gain markers when they started to play. They were on a hard line, which was that second stripe. The 22 is the is the hash mark line that he needs to get to. When I looked at the first uh, live feed, even though our camera's a little behind that, that gives the perception that the football is a little further than it may be. It did appear to me that that ball made it to the 22 yard line, that second hash mark that we see right there on the inbound. That is where he needed to get uh, to get that first down. It's really close. The one thing I will tell you guys, without a really direct shot down the line, when you're dealing with the little angle like that, a couple feet off either way from the angle of the camera can distort that. So it's a difficult play for them to move. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, play. Auburn. And that, just from those that would views, have been my take on it as well, guys. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Gene. From those views, it's hard to tell. You can tell all you want. Okay, it looks like he did cross what was the 17-yard line, but it's not definitive. You that's why Gene, call on the field. That's why Gene's the best. Yep. <laughs> Way to go, Gene. When we you're use words like today. look like and feels like, guys, those are usually determining factors that the play will stay in. <laughs> well, our Gene fits just right today in Fayetteville. And it's first down and 10 for Auburn. Bigsby with some space, and he's tripped up. 
That saves a huge gainer as it looked like Bigsby was going to break one loose on first and ten. The hips are loose. The cutting is there right now, and he's making the defenders look silly. These guys are coming in too aggressive, and he just has the ability to bounce it to the outside. Second time we've seen Greg Brooks one-on-one -on -one filling in, trying to contain and not doing his job for this Arkansas defense. It was Slusher who has replaced the injured Catalan who finally made the tackle. Bring up second down and five for Knicks. Let's it air out. Oh, nearly intercepted. It was in the general direction. Monteric Brown and a flag is thrown. Pass interference on the defense. Pass interference on the defense number 21. 50 yard penalty from the previous spot and that carries an automatic first down. Yeah, I'd like to see it again. Quarterbacks always get away with bad throws somehow. Under throws, balls behind. But that's the way it is. When you throw a ball that far behind, defender's just in a bad position, and uh, that, that, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing there. Auburn got lucky with that one. The flag was late and looking, from our vantage point, wrong. Well, it's all, it happened on the Auburn sideline, so you know you got a bunch of chirping and screaming and yelling and <laughs> you peer, think, peer pressure. You don't think they could be influenced. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Buster Brown penalized on that pass interference, and Bixby dropped for a loss again. Miles Slusher has really settled in after that slow start. He has found a rhythm, and he has made some big plays. You can see he's reading his keys. He's making this tackle behind the line of scrimmage. When safeties are behind the line of scrimmage, something told them they can trigger. By the way, when asking Sam Pittman about the penalties and the struggles throughout the year, he said, I can live with one or two holding penalties per game, even a, a pass interference for here or there. It's the pre-stap stuff that really bothers him. The false starts, the offsides, those types of things that are easily correctable. Hunter, fake it to him. Nix will roll out. He's going to keep it himself, and Nix doesn't have much space himself. Let's pick up a couple and bring up third down and five. Well, this is something we asked the Auburn coaching staff. Based on last week's film, watching Ole Miss versus defense, Matt Corral did a great job running the football, designed quarterback runs. That wasn't one there, but just shows you the weapon that Bo Nix is when he does, does decide to pull down and run it. And I do believe if they want to have success, obviously get Tank going, but Bo has to be a factor with his legs as well. Huge third down for this Arkansas defense. Five receivers set. Knicks 10 of 12 today. Back to the air. On time. On target. And a first down. Shedrick Jackson, another big catch. From a pure, from a pure drop back standpoint, this is the best I've seen Bo Nix play. He is absolutely in rhythm. He's on time. And he's accurate. Well, also the receivers. I mean, I go back to the Georgia State game. The receivers, if you really watch their routes, they were not crisp. They were kind of wandering, lackadaisical. Right now you're seeing these guys, you saw right there now, coming back to the quarterback, defending the ball, making the catches. I think overall the offense playing at a high level. Jarquez Hunter back in the game. Fake it to him. Left it. Complete again. Malcolm Johnson out of bounds. This is the third RPO. They give him a quick out to the field. He can take it if it's there. He's three for three on him. He now is 12 of 14 guys. He's averaging 10 yards an attempt. This is Mike Bobo at his best right now, the play caller for Auburn. This is when you can call anything you want. Eight different receivers have a catch. You might be looking for a shot here. You're feeling hot. It's a second and three. Nix will hand it off to Hunter instead. Runs into a wall. Maybe even loses a yard. Well, they've done a great job hitting these seam routes in these third and medium situations. Anywhere about 10 to 12 yards, you get your slot receiver matched up against the safety. Also, don't forget, possible four-down territory. So, Bo Nix with his legs, always a threat. We talk about K.J. Jefferson in these situations. We've seen the magic of Bo Nix here this season. They get the senior Shivers in the backfield, one of the better pass catchers at the running back position for a third down and four for Nix, who airs it out on the sideline. It's picked off. Taken away by Buster Brown, who makes up for the pass interference penalty earlier on the drive. Only 
Finally, the second interception of the season. And same in as many weeks for Bo Nix. Buster Brown, a huge play to save points. And Arkansas is back in business at the end of the second. Fourteen three, Auburn still in front despite Arkansas getting their fifth interception of the season. It's been pretty successful though for Bo Nix before this. And he just looks comfortable in the pocket at the moment. Footwork has slowed down for previous games. Receivers running great routes. He's getting through it. But Coach Neuheisel, you're a former quarterback. You know you can't talk good about a quarterback in the middle of a game. Did I tell him we had a no-hitter? Yeah. Is that what you're telling you're me? Tell me the man was feeling himself and uh, tries a back shoulder fade and great job defensively going up with the 50-50 ball on that one. The broadcaster jinx. You believe in that? Both of you guys believe. I do now. That's what you're saying. Holy smoke. Yeah, you're, you're fully indoctrinated into it. Just a second interception for Knicks, and a nice play on first down for Traylon Smith. Flag comes in late, but a good pickup. Let's see what the penalty is here. Holding. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number nine. That 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. Momentum shifting towards the Hogs. Coming up, Adam BJ and Houston Nutt will have first half analysis and highlights from around the country on the Geico halftime report. Huge, huge drive here for Arkansas. 253 they started this drive with. They want to use all of it, come away with points. Remember, they get the ball first in that second half. Both teams, two penalties. Man in motion is Morris. Jefferson will go out of the gun on first down and 10. Play action pass. Plenty of time, and it runs out. Quickly, Colby Wooden with his third sack of the year. Well, it's a drop eight coverage, just rushing three defenders all day in the pocket, but that also gives him one-on-one -on -one opportunity on the edge to get after KJ. So a second and 18 after the loss of eight, and they go to the ground with Smith. A series of moves, and he just couldn't get through the maze of the Tigers' defense. Third down and long upcoming. Time timeout out is called. Timeout Auburn here. They're thinking they got a chance to uh, get the ball back and make something happen here at the end of this half. Auburn still with an 11-point lead, a third and very long for Arkansas when we return for Baylor. All right, Adam, guys, what was what was your longest rush ever? Close uh, to 99? I, it, actually, I went for like 30 one time, but it, they blew the whistle, and that's the only reason I went 30, because I was the only one that thought the play was still alive. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> quarterback sneak guy. No, Aaron? Was, quarterback sneak. Tom Brady asked, you know, 10 yards to get out of bounds. I had like a 50-yarder once. You see, no, no. You can't, you can't I need play it on pull. You know exactly. Yeah, true. Receipts are video confirmation. Absolutely exhausted. Both my longest <laughs> runs in my career were Tennessee twice, freshman year and then senior year, both about 50. They were just volunteering for you. They were. Third and 17, big play for Arkansas. They've struggled on third and long all season. Jefferson out of the gun, drops back to pass. Jefferson on the run, he got it complete. Looks like it's about a yard short to Traylon Burks. I think they got the first down. No, I think great job by Burks. Watch the top of the route coming back to protect the football on the dagger route and just the natural hands that he has. It is a first down and 10, so they'll stay in the air with Jefferson who rifles a little bit short. Looking for Morris. When talking to KJ Jefferson about his drop back mechanics, he said there's still some fundamental stuff I need to work on here. You can see he kind of waits with his front leg, Aaron. Overstrides, that's why that ball falls short for him. Second and 10. Dominique Johnson, the sophomore from Crowley, Texas, in the game. Fake it to him. Jefferson cuts up field, takes a blow, and keeps going. K.J. Jefferson, too strong as he about a yard shy of a first down. And what an absolute monster. I asked K.J. this week, I said, how sore were you after last week's game? And, <laughs> and what's, what, what do you do during the week? A lot of ice baths, stretching, massages. I mean, he does it all. Third down and one. Dominique Johnson tried to just This, this has been there. a problem down for their Hogs today. They have not been able to push the pile for first downs. It looks as though they're getting the signal that they got this one up. Just enough. 
Kendall Bryles trying to dial up some points. 105 left. All your timeouts still at hand. This is uh, comfortable if you're Arkansas. No need to hurry. And your run game's still alive. I love that set. Fifth straight drive, but Auburn's defense right now has been buckling up. Jefferson surveys. Lofts completes. Out of the backfield, Dominique Johnson makes the catch. All three timeouts still left for Arkansas. Clock at 47 seconds here in this first half. Kind of feels like a role reversal from last week where Auburn was stalling in between the 30s. Well, also for Arkansas, though, they, they feel good in this two-minute situation. Jefferson, dump it off. And putting the head down, Hudson Henry. Yeah. They play tempo all the time, yeah. so they're used to this. Well, in the confidence they had last week, what they did for first Ole Miss, they weren't counting them out. They were able to drive down the field, score a touchdown. With three timeouts left, fellas, you need to save one for your field goal team, but they're thinking bigger than that right now. Well, they just got a penalty. So. Fading away, and another completion to Henry. Bulldozing forward, Jefferson took a pop in the backfield. Auburn had a uh, 12th defender trying to get off the field. They got caught for that. I think they actually had 13 defenders, Coach, trying to get off the <laughs> field on that one. And Who's counting? Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. And, and watch the Auburn defenders. They just, they're just like, all right, we, we messed up. Too many guys. <laughs> we hit the penalty. Just please don't throw a touchdown. Derek Hall was slow to get off the field. And so now a first down and five from the 27-yard line. Arkansas knocking on the, do on the door right here. I, I do give Auburn credit because how many times have we seen a player fall in that situation? <laughs> Just saying. At least they're, they're, they're they took it through. like a man. They took it like a man. Nimble feet for sure. Johnson stays in the game. Get it to him underneath, and Johnson keeps the legs working inside the 20. This is what we call a shovel draw. Rather than handing it off on a draw, he just pitches it forward, and away we go. Beautifully schemed play by uh, Kendall Bryles. Timeout called by Arkansas. 31 seconds left in the first half. First and 10 from the 18 when we come back. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, catch a Mountain West nightcap as Nevada takes on Hawaii on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. First down and 10, just over 30 seconds left in this first half. Brooks is in motion. That is the go-to guy in these situations for Jefferson, who instead goes the other to Rocket Sanders, who is popped immediately by McCreary. Yeah, that's a heck of a catch. They're trying to get all eyes on Burks going to the right and a throwback, but Auburn's defense stays home, and heck of a catch by Rocket. So Arkansas takes their second timeout. Looking for points at the end of this first half. It'll be a second down in three for Arkansas following a seven-yard pickup from Rocket Sanders. A great play by Roger McCreary getting him down in bounds, making Arkansas use their second time out there. So now 25 seconds left, a couple shots at the end zone before having to settle for the field goal as Jefferson looked to jump pass it, brought it back down. They're trying to get a little jump pass over the top of the inside linebacker who's got a conflicted job here. He's going to try to tackle the quarterback on draw, and then he's going to have to try to cover somebody getting behind him. Well, a great job by Burks, who's staying alive. He's one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Everyone thinks the play's over because the jump pass isn't there. He said, well, I'm wide open in the end zone, QB. Find me. But KJ staying alive for the touchdown. Little the extra point, and it is within four with under 20 seconds left here in the first half. What a drive by that young man. Superman up, down. Five by receiver in the back, making it a game. Bob is pumped. 14 10 over. Tenth passing touchdown of the season. For KJ Jefferson culminates a 12 play 84 yard drive in just 235. He was six of seven on that drive as well. Well, he was brilliant on the drive, and that last play was one of those classic no, 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 great throw. <laughs> Sometimes it's just recruiting, guys. It's just recruiting. 
Auburn will not return this one. And we'll see what they do with 18 seconds left. Inside the NFL is now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Get expert insight and exclusive commentary from the hardest hitting team in the game, including James Brown, Phil Sims, Brandon Marshall, Ray Lewis, Michael Irvin, and Julian Edelman. Stream new episodes of the Emmy Award winning series Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. No, it looks like Auburn's going to try maybe one run play, see if they can get tanked to pop one and then make a decision. But that was a monster drive for Arkansas to make it one possession before halftime. Bigsby looking for space, nothing doing, and that'll likely take us to the half. So Bigsby with a productive first half, by the way, with that touchdown, 44 yards on 11 carries. And we've got a good one in store. We thought we'd have two teams desperate for a win. They're playing like it. We're in for a great second half, boys. It's the end of the first half with the score. Auburn 14, Arkansas 10. For Jenny's halftime interview with Coach Harson, go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. We now send you to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for the Geico Halftime Report on CBS. And now, a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. Let's send it down to Jenny. The last time Arkansas beat Auburn was a four-overtime thriller in 2015. Auburn's field goal, as time expired, sent the game into its first overtime. Still knotted up in the third OT, both teams ran the ball in for scores. On Arkansas's first play of the fourth overtime, Brandon Allen hit Drew Morgan for the 25-yard touchdown. The Hogs then went up eight after punching in the two-point conversion. Now when Auburn got the ball back, the Arkansas defense sealed the victory. Arkansas won 54-46, the Razorbacks' last win against their SEC West foe. It's been five in a row for the Tigers. They look to make it six in the second half. Arkansas will get the second half kick when we return from Fayetteville. Back in Fayetteville, where number 17, Arkansas, looking to bounce back after back-to-back -back losses and five straight losses to the Auburn Tigers. Glad to have you with us from Razorback Stadium. No Eagle coach for Drew Heisel. Aaron Murray and Jenny Dell. Glad you could join us. And, and we're looking forward to the second half because there's a lot on the line for both teams. Realistically, there's a lot that can shift based on the result today. Well, we knew both these teams were very balanced. Both came in averaging over 200 yards, both throwing and running the football. I'm a little surprised, Aaron, that Auburn's got the lead with only 58 yards rushing. Well, it goes to Bo Nix having a great first half. Yeah, he did have the interception, but overall, I think it's been a very clean game. And we talked about the start of this. Both teams understand the importance of winning today when it comes to the SEC West. Absolutely. KJ Jefferson has been efficient, especially coming on late in that first half. And Arkansas reached Auburn territory all five possessions. It was just about punching it in, which they finally did on the touchdown to Burks. Jefferson, eight for his last 10, 78 yards. And it will be Arkansas who gets this opening kick to start the second half. Let's go down to Jenny Dell. Yeah, Coach Harson said that's not the momentum shift he wanted to see at the end of that first half there. But overall, pleased with the play of his team, really signaling out Bo Nix and how comfortable he looks in the offense today. Now, as far as Coach Pittman goes, he said overall we got to clean it up. So we're playing too loose in the secondary. Our offense is lethargic. Guys, he said we need to figure out a way to stay on the field in third and short situations. Well, right now with Bo Nix, too, is interesting saying on the, that storyline, Jenny, really only got 60% of the reps in practice this week. They didn't really know how much he was going to play in this game, but I thought he put a stamp on that quarterback position in the first half. A.J. Green, the running back, to start this second half. Gets past one tackler. Green will get positive yardage to start the third quarter, but a flag is on the field back at the 24. By Darius Knighton finally came in to chop him down. Keep in mind, Auburn has outscored their opponents in third quarters this year, 72 to 20. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face on the defense number 29. That 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run and it carries an automatic first down. And now some mental mistakes coming for the Tigers defensively. Those are the kind of things as a defensive coordinator just make you pull your hair out. I mean, hey, look, we've got these guys corralled. Let's make them go the long field, keep everything in front of us, and then give them a free 15. Unfortunate start for the Tigers. Good news for that Auburn defensive unit. Marquise Burks, who, you look at the right side of your screen, that's where that penalty occurred. Marquise Burks, who left the game in the first half, is eligible to return here in the second as Jefferson scampers forward for two. We go back to the importance of that final drive for Arkansas to make this a one possession game to get some confidence. And also, we, we just talked about it, get some confidence when they cross the 50-yard line. Be able to punch it in there and get seven points on the board. 
Second down and nine, handed off Green. Shimmies every which direction, and he is dragged backwards after the gain of one. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage as Kobe McLean came in and made sure there was no more forward progress available. Arkansas was six of 10 in the first half on third down. Another big third down right here. Uh, but this is what they were able to capitalize on. It was one of our keys to the game early in the game where we said they were four of 32 on third and seven plus. Let's see what they can get done here. Well, we're finally seeing the diamond formation. And they're gonna shift out of it. And this is go-to. Birch is gonna be in the slot. All eyes on him, see if they get a good matchup. Traylon Smith, the running back on third down and nine. Jefferson with time. Jefferson looks to escape and does. Jefferson got a block from the referee, and he's into open space. KJ Jefferson down the sideline and finally out of bounds. What a block by the referee. God, I love when he gets involved. Watch the you know, KJ going through his reads. No one's there. No one's there. Let me go out there and be an athlete. Hey, up. Give me a little bow. Give me some. Give me some room to run. Big gain sets up first down, just shy of the 30. Hand it off to Smith. Stutter step and a gain of two. SEC standings once again. That West Division is wide open. Well, anybody with one loss has everything to play for. Arkansas, obviously, with a win today, gives Auburn their second loss. And Alabama's got a tough matchup tonight with uh, Mississippi State. I know the folks in uh, Starkville are waiting for those Crimson Tide fellas. And remember, both these teams play Alabama later in the season as Jefferson will go to the air on second down and eight. Air it out for the end zone. Beautifully thrown ball. Great job by the offensive line. Give them some credit. Giving their quarterback adequate time. But if you're going to leave Burks one on one the slot, he's going to make you look silly. Post route, first drive. KJ Jefferson making some magic. Arkansas takes the lead. First multi touchdown day of the year for Traylon Burks, who now has. Five touchdowns on the season, five in his last five games, and he played basketball in high school, showed off some of the skill here. Well, if you're going to play outside leverage, I mean, you're just giving them exactly what they want on the skinny post from the slot. They've run enough slot fade, so you feel like, okay, I'm going to get leverage defensively. Not so fast. Two touchdowns. And it's just fun to watch because he uses his hands. He plays the position so well. Aaron, we came into this game thinking it was going to be uh, about running games, right? The two quarterbacks right now are combined 26 of 33, nearly 80%. Send it deep. Shivers and puts it. Don't even try to return it. And Vesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Nick Brahms on one side, the offensive lineman for Auburn. Grant Morgan, the graduate student linebacker for Arkansas and Vesco is proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation of a thousand dollars to Auburn and Arkansas's general scholarship funds. You talk about super seniors. Grant oh, yeah. Morgan is a super senior and then some. I mean what he provides in the leadership department goes along with the 50 tackles he had coming into the first team all SEC last year younger brother of Drew former Hogs wide receiver. First down at the 25, swing it quickly to Jackson, who tries to turn it up and gains four. Well, those are the easy throws we saw Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, call in the first half to get Bo Nix a little bit more comfortable, get the ball out of his hands, move the ball down the field, and then they took a shot for a big touchdown. But a lot of zone coverage on the back end and a lot of holes that Bo Nix right now looks very comfortable dissecting. Aaron, it looks like he's had an epiphany. Yeah. He is spreading the sugar so far in Fayetteville. Second down and six play action. 
Roll out across his body, incomplete. Luke Deal has been a go-to guy for Knicks today, and he comes up just about two yards shy. Well, Coach, I want to go back to what you just brought up with Bo Nix, and, and we covered him last week. We've watched the film, right. but the comfort right now with his footwork, it's just... It's slower. I mean, the biggest Somebody issue. Somebody has turned the dial down. Yeah. yeah. Well, the biggest issue, he was too fast for his receivers. You know, he gets to the top of his drop, his receivers hadn't turned yet, so he's getting off one, moving the two, moving the three. Better timing between him and his guys. Third down and two. Knicks hands it off, and Bixby is dumped. What Big a play. play by Hayden Henry. What a play by Hayden Henry. We talked about. Uh, Morgan just a moment ago. Hayden Henry is all Arkansas. Every one of his brothers played here. You talked about Morgan's brother playing here. These guys just bleed Razorback red. And a three and out to start for Auburn. Polar opposites from how we saw the first half begin, where it was Auburn driving right down the field in the deep shot from Knicks. Instead, Chapman will punt. Perotti will return. Perotti makes the catch. He is walloped at the 30. Arkansas starting to flex a little bit at home. Leading by three. We'll see if they can add. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. In Besco QQQ. AT&T 5G by Affleck. John Richardson, Arkansas's first black scholarship football player, honored before today's game with a plaque on Difference Makers Plaza. Little Rock native, played tailback and lettered at Arkansas from 1970 to 1972, passed away in 2002, but inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame in 2008. A legend here and about 74,000 fans excited, loud, into it, energized as the Razorbacks have found some momentum in their favor. Last two drives, just over five minutes combined. They're on a 14-0 score and run. Brooks, the man in motion, has both touchdowns. Jefferson will go under center on first down. Quick hitter to Burks. Makes one man miss. Makes a second man miss. Traylon Burks, a game breaker. When you can catch the ball behind the line of scrimmage and make a first down because you're that good an athlete, I'd throw it to him also. <laughs> I'd give it to him as often as I could. I had one guy like that, A.J. Green. We would just throw it to him, and he'd make guys look silly in the field. And it's like, all right, it's, it's a run play. And, and don't make a guy miss. He's, he's special. Fresh set of downs for Jefferson. Lots of time in the pocket. Rifles one to the sideline. It's caught by Warren Thompson, who's pushed out of bounds, and they will call it incomplete as Thompson dropped it, trying to complete the catch. Right now, the, the thing we're seeing, we'll see the, the drop from Thompson, who had a terrific game last week, just not able to finish the catch. That looked like a catch to I, me. I agree, but... Right now, you're not really seeing much of a pass rush. Great job by this Arkansas front five. Second down and 10. Jefferson will keep. And great job by that Auburn defense. Smoke Monday came from the defensive backfield and finally brought him down. Well, I am surprised Sam didn't let a little more time go to let him think about that one uh, and get a view from the top on the, whether that was a catch or not. Third down and long. This is where they don't want to be. Jefferson empty backfield to the air incomplete he was looking for Hudson Henry over the middle and it brings up fourth down and eight nothing there they're playing the sticks Auburn defensively Traylon Burks not in the game taking a little bit of a breather Kendall Bryles came off the sideline animated looking for Warren Thompson to go to the post Warren broke that route and was in the same vicinity as his teammate. Second punt of the day for Reed Bauer. We'll send it deep to Demetrius Robertson, who's been fairly quiet today. Someone that Bo Nix will generally look for in the pass game. Bauer boots it. Robertson will return. Gets a pass oh! And he is dumped out of bounds. Absolutely crushed. Great special teams play. 
made by Jackson Woodard. So we'll see if Auburn can get back on the board, tie or take the lead. It's Woodard continuing to set the tone for the Hogs. After Arkansas took their first lead of the game on the first possession of this third quarter, Auburn will have a chance to regain control. Let's test your knowledge with today's AFLAC trivia question. Last time Arkansas beat Auburn, 2015 quadruple overtime. First overtime game in SEC history in 1996. Also went to quadruple overtime. What was the matchup in that game? I know this one. I think I think I know I think it, it too. We, we, were, mark, we, were right? we were given a little hint last week. Well, we'll wait for the answer after Bo Nix goes back to work. It'll be first down from the 27. Nix today, 14 of 16, 149 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Go to the air on the first play and try to get it to Deal, who was held up. And that's a great job by Gregory on the outside, not being fooled. What Auburn loves to do is the zone read, but then sneak a tight end on the backside. He stayed home. In anticipation of Bonix possibly pulling the football and right place, right timing. And right now for Auburn, run game has not been up to par. But Bo Nix, when we keep he looks good. I would put the ball in his hands a little bit more here in the second half. Auburn driving on second and ten. And he goes right back to the well. Luke Deal out of bounds. Let's go to Jenny. Yeah, well, last season as a freshman, Tate Bigsby had a breakout game against Arkansas, and Coach Pittman remembers that. He said before the game, we have to gang tackle him. We got to get a lot of guys around him to get him on the ground. And, guys, Pittman told me that he kindly reminded his defense of that fact during the half. We're going to line Bigsby out wide here on third down and five. Arkansas back in their three-down look here on third down. Let's see if Nix has some magic. Nix. Escapes, lofts, oh, it was wide open, but incomplete. Landon King dropped what would have been a huge gain. And the first big drop in a big moment for Auburn. We saw it over and over again last week, and great job by Bo Nix. And I'm just, I don't know if you put that in the drop category and not off the fingertips, you touch it. So I guess you, I am a former quarterback, so I'll say catch the ball. Tough one and a tough break for that Auburn offense. It's nice of you to side with the quarterback. Always, always. It's never the quarterback's fault. Peroni back to return the punt from Chapman. Another three and out from Auburn looking to take their first win over a ranked team in seven tries. And this one's going to take a favorable Tigers bounce to the 11. So that's where K.J. Jefferson and the Arkansas Razorbacks will start this drive up by three. Big time SEC showdown here on CBS. Outstanding. And if you watch Hard Knocks, he is extremely vocal as well. Rocket Sanders in the game and will get the call on first down. Picks up a couple. Quick play by Marcus Harris. So Arkansas defense is kind of uh, rearing up a little bit in the second half showing that uh, they want to be part of this uh, final storyline as well. Well, I think the, the formula for both defenses coaches let's load the box a little bit and force these quarterbacks who had a great first half. We'll see if they can do it for an entire game. Razorbacks scored 37 points in the second half against Ole Miss last week. Second and nine. And Jefferson is tripped up in the backfield. Combination of Wooden and Hall. And Wooden, already with a sack today, is living in that area. They put Traylon Burks out to the wide receiver, which is an indicator they're going to take a shot. He ends up throwing a uh, little slant and go. K.J. Jefferson kind of waiting for him. Ends up waiting too long. That's a great job by that front who had the sack early in the game, but really have not forced K.J. to move much in the pocket on dropbacks. Looking for something simple here. Crossing route screen. Third and long backed up. Burned on third and second. First half and Jefferson loses the football in the end zone and it's recovered. Is this an Auburn touchdown? It is. Marcus Harris gets it done and puts six on the board for the Tigers. And that's why in that situation I prefer to get the ball to my quarterback hand. Third and long. Backed up your own end zone. Just get a couple of yards, punt it, say, hey, we'll, we'll let our defense go out on the field. Auburn taking an advantage, back-to-back -back sacks, coming off the edge, one-on-one. -on -one. 
And that's the matchup they want to see. Cunningham, the left tackle. Auburn felt good. Derek Mason felt good that his DNs can create some pressure on that left side. Derek Hall forces the fumble in the end zone. Harris is there to recover it immediately. And Carlson on the sixth force fumble of the season for Auburn makes it 21-17. What's remarkable is that Kendall Bryle said, we don't turn it over, we win, and he calls that play back there. What a turnaround here in Fayetteville. Big swing play, the Auburn defense scores a scoop and score within the end zone. Fumble forced by Derek Hall, recovered by Marcus Harris, and 14 straight points from Arkansas. They now trail after the touchdown from Auburn. About 74,000 here at Razorback Stadium. They were loud from the end of the first half into the first half of this third quarter. And that Auburn defensive front quieted them real quick. Let's look at that Aflac trivia question. Our answer. All right, guys, what you think? Aflac. Felt confident Georgia with what you Auburn? Do. Georgia Auburn? Is yes, that it? the matchup from a week ago. Yep. Boom. Was he Bobo, Bobo was rivalry. a quarterback there, right? Was Bobo quarterback in at that Georgia? Time? At Georgia, let me double check. I think, I think it was 1994. 93 to 97, so you are correct. You are correct. I shouldn't doubt you. Bobo. First down from the 25, Jefferson. As Dominique Johnson coming and standing right next to him. Big drive ahead now based on everything that's transpired. And Jefferson on a chunk play will bring up second down and short. So Kobe McLean drags him down. There is Mike Bobo, who Aaron knows very familiar. Calling a great game plan right now. And, and it's been interesting to see his offense evolve this season with Harson. Quick strike to Burks. Give him some space, and he's going to make a play and then some. Another first down for the junior. Perhaps a hold out there by one of those Razorbacks. We'll wait and wait for the call. Holding on the offense, number 10. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Devion Warren, the senior from Monroe, Louisiana, called for the penalty. Kendall Bryles wants to atone for that play call down in the uh, backed up in the end zone right there. Uh, he's got to feel badly about putting his quarterback in that position, so this is an important drive to get some rhythm back for the Razorbacks as they fell behind. I don't know about that holding call, Coach. I, I, it, hands are a little bit wide, but ticky-tacky in my mind. I've, I've always asked officials, what are, you, what are you looking for in the hold? They're trying to see if somebody gets total position because of the hands. The hands are in bad position, but they have to see it from the beginning to the end. And if you don't, then sometimes you can get fooled, especially when someone goes to the ground. I've asked officials a lot of questions in my life. <laughs> it's a daily thing for me, too. Burks, by the way, eight catches, 108 yards. His fourth 100-yard game of the season. He's got a season high in catches as well. We'll see if they go right back to him will be second down and five. Fourth time in the last five games. It, look, KJ Jefferson said it. He's a go-to guy for a reason. He's a mismatch everywhere on the field. You know, the thing I love about him is he's not just an X receiver. He's not a Z receiver. He can play the F position. You can move him around, and I think that's what guys at the next level want to see. Can you play and handle the entire playbook, which he can well. Second down and five from the 30. And it off. Johnson's got space. Johnson to the outside across the 40, and he's finally dragged out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Zion Puckett maybe saves even more. What a great job by this offensive line. You're going to see a power. Both guard and tackle pulled around the right, handling the front seven of this Auburn Tiger defense. 166 rushing yards for Arkansas. This is what they do best. They've got three different players with 300 or more rushing yards on the season. Only team in the FBS that can say that. Kendall Bryles, the offensive corner, stands back behind the offense, looking at the defense, surveying it, sees what he wants, makes the communication to KJ. Burks, the man in motion. Jefferson keeps, fires, completes to Kern. And Kern bulldozes forward, dragging white jerseys with him. 
Well, it's good to see the tight ends involved. Last week we said we saw Trey Knox, who's the receiver they put at tight end for these situations because of the lack of depth at the position. But beautiful read by the quarterback, pulling it, accurate throw. Jefferson now 17 of 24, fresh set of downs, lofts it wide and open. He's got Warren, who drops the football out of bounds. Davion Warren makes that terrible mistake of making the move before he catches it. He's getting ready to put his foot in the ground and cut back inside and just left the ball behind. You saw the head turn. He was ready to go. He's thinking, I'm about to make this DB look stupid and score a touchdown instead of just catching the ball first. And that's not an easy throw. And, and we've talked about KJ progressing as a quarterback, rolling to your left, deep out route on an absolute rope. Receiver's got to make the play, though. Turn the man in motion on second down and 10. Hand it off. Rocket Sanders, shifty. Just shy of the 30-yard line will pick up five. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen much, Coach, of the empty formations in these situations where you spread them out, you see if you can run it or throw it. I think four down here, don't you, Aaron? Oh, 100%. We'll put Jefferson under center on third and four. Play action. Rolling. Jefferson surveys. Jefferson keeps the football and he's wrapped up. What a great play by Derek Hall again, who forced the fumble in the end zone. Crowd is looking for a flag and won't get one. That's big boy SEC football right there. Man on man, two giant human beings colliding. Crowd wondering this could be targeting, but his face was up. Yeah. And remember, the quarterback when he's running is not the defenseless ball carrier. Totally legal play. Fourth down and three. Kendall Bryles leaving his offense on the field. Well, the, the thing right now is they're going to put Burks backside, making the defense declare, do we want to double him or not? Right now they're going to single up man to man. Fourth down and three. Jefferson will look to run it up the gut, and he didn't get there. Second time today that Auburn has gotten a fourth down stop and gotten the ball back for their offense. Marcus Harris, big play. Well, right now they put six guys in the box defensively. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're accounting for everyone. This is why you got one-on-one -on -one the outside. This is when you got to throw the football. Great job defensively, stopping the run, loading up the box, and saying if you're going to get this first down, it better be through the air. Wooden in on the action, and just like that, Bo Nix, another opportunity with the third quarter beginning to wind down to put some more points on the board and extend the lead. Nix on play action on first down. He'll die up the deep ball. Slight separation, dropped it in the basket. Demetrius Robertson is gone. Touchdown, Auburn. It's a bow ridiculousness once again as the magician has come out to play. An epiphany. The youngsters figured out how to set his feet, put air on the ball, and the receivers are making the plays a week ago they couldn't make. We got a post route, and we're going to have a corner to take this safety out of the play. And that's all Bo Nix is going to do. Play action. What does the safety do? He's going to take the out route. I got the post, and you said it, coach. Air time, air time, air time. Let my receiver make a play in the football. Beautifully thrown by Bo Nix. 71 yards later, Anders Carlson makes it 28-17. Well, if you want airtime, Bo Nix is getting airtime right now. We are absolutely uh, loving what's getting done here. It's time for the Hogs to figure out a way to get back. Because right now, it's all War Eagle. The new season of Survivor is more fun, more dangerous, and more difficult to win. With twists and turns you've never seen before, Survivor is a brand new game, and it's a monster. New Wednesday at 8, 7 central on CBS. Big play after big play. 14 straight points from Auburn after 14 straight points from Arkansas. The fair catch is going to be made at the 10-yard line, so this will start at the 25. Bo Nix now over 200 yards on the day. I mean, it has been night and day, his performance from the previous weeks. Learning how to throw some touch on the football down the field. His feet have slowed down. They're in great rhythm and timing with his receivers. And then just the trust to let it rip. Trust your eyes, trust your footwork. 
And let's not forget, these receivers are playing at an all-time level at the moment as well. 16-20, 225, two touchdowns, the lone interception. But, Coach, I mean, we're, we're loving what we're seeing from Bo right now. Absolutely. Give a little love to that offensive line, giving him the time to stand in there and be calm. But uh, it's been beautiful. Traylon Smith, who's been somewhat limited today, and he's not going to get much more going here. Another loss and gang tackled by the Auburn defense. Well, they're feeling good, too. And, and Arkansas, we were talking about during the break, the third down and short has been their Achilles heel. And that shouldn't be with a quarterback like K.J. Jefferson with the weapons they have, the running game. But that front four and front seven of Auburn have really stepped up in crunch time. So now a second down and 13 for Jefferson out of the gun. They'll run it. Takes a hit and spins forward to pick up a couple more past the original line of scrimmage. Chandler Wooten greeted him eagerly. Guys, there's there's 18 minutes left in this ball game, but this feels like a huge play. Get this crowd back going, stay on the field, let that defense uh, get a little breath as they gave up that giant play. This is a really big play for the Arkansas offense. They've almost been better in these third and longer situations. They've got Burks today. outside. Jefferson in third and seven. Pumps, lets it go, wide open, Hudson Henry, first down and more. Henry explodes forward near midfield. Zion Puckett finally brings him down. And look at the offensive line giving time to their quarterback. Auburn's only rushing three. He's able to go right all the way to left on the mesh concept. And the tight ends, the past couple possessions, making some plays for this offense. Jefferson now nearing 200 yards himself. Play action. Jefferson out of the pocket and he'll throw it away. Wisely. Wisely gets rid of that one. His maturity in the pocket from the beginning of the season to now has been really fun to watch. Making the decisions. Obviously, he wants that uh, safety turn touchdown uh, back in his own end. He needed to get that one out of there, feeling that alarm clock inside his own mind. But uh, he's been comfortable in the pocket today. Second and ten, they go to the ground. Rocket Sanders, so elusive, so slippery, an 11-yard game. And once again, pull the left guard around. They'll go quick here. Jefferson right back to Sanders. And he stood up at the 45, make it the 40. Still haven't seen many shots from this offense, especially on the first down. You would think right there, across the, you're across the 50, got a big first. Let's see if we can go for one. It's been really Auburn that have connected on the deep balls in this game. Looking Burke's direction, just behind him. Jefferson trying to actually make it with Tyson Morris, who was going on a deeper slant. Just late with the throw, kind of held it. That ball needs to be gone right now. I think he was waiting for that defender who was covering the flat to clear. And you're winning, being behind the as, receiver. As you know, if you're waiting for the defender, that means you need to throw the ball to the flat. Exactly. At times. If he's going to hang at all, because the more you wait, there I could have coached you, Murray. I could have coached you. Play. That's beautiful. We could have had some fun in L.A. <laughs> Third down and nine for Jefferson. Rips one, and it's another first down. Warren Thompson. Two huge third down conversions in a row for the Razorbacks. Look at KJ's eyes. You're looking left. He knows he wants to go right. He exactly. wants to hold the linebacker where he is, come back, and throw a dart. Back to Sanders. Couldn't shuffle past the initial rush from that Auburn front. Tony Fair got great penetration. They're kind of drawing, drawing a bead on this first down running game. Kendall might be thinking more about a uh, little play action on first down uh, if he's fortunate enough to make another one. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. Balls on the Tigers' 29-yard line. Second down and 10 out of the gun. Get it off to Sanders. Wiggles forward to the 25. Third down and five. They've been they've hit their last two. Now you want to be careful about just saying this is four down territory because they've been unsuccessful the last couple of times. And a field goal here makes it a one-score game. We're going to go quick. Tempo from Jefferson. Hands it off to Sanders. Finds a hole. Rocket Sanders. Shoelace tackle made by 
Give Zion pocket. And just a zone to the right. Great job by the offensive line. They even bring the tight end in as well. Number 82, Hudson Henry. First and 10, look play action. Jefferson does hand it off to Sanders. <laughs> just couldn't quite get it just, over it. Coach, it just feels like almost a wasted play right now on first down. Of Okay, let's just hand the ball off and, and get a yard or two. And I'm with you. Just at some point, this is an offense that wants to take shots on first down. If you're not having success, might as well give it a go. And a lot see of hands something. on the hips out there for the Razorbacks. They look a little gassed. I think Auburn does too. Let's see if they get one more playoff before the end of the third quarter. Jefferson sends Brooks in motion. Jefferson, and off. Johnson, the hole, the score. Dominique Johnson, Arkansas touchdown. Kendall Bryles says, hey, you fellas upstairs, I know what I'm doing. Beautiful call. Well, you see the linebacker get out of position. Right here, you get your main receiver in motion, eyes on him all of a sudden. You leave a short box, five on five. And then the offense line doing their thing. And Arkansas going to go for two to make it a three-score game. But great design, great job distracting the defenders with your premier receiver in motion. Kind of a 50-50 here for me. I, I, I think there's enough time in the game not to do this. But uh, as we know, Sam Pittman not afraid to roll the dice. We saw it at the end of the game at Ole Miss last week. Did not get it, lost the game by one. Johnson stays in and now goes in motion. Burks one on one. Let's see if Jefferson looks his direction. This is Jefferson to Burks. In and out of his hands. Incomplete. Roger McCleary in coverage. Absolutely beautiful job by the cornerback. Yep. Bang, bang play. It's one on one. You split the receiver out that far. You know it's Lance coming. Still wins, but can't finish it off. Auburn takes the lead, head into the fourth. Arkansas has four different running backs that can hurt you, and it's the sophomore Dominique Johnson that gets the touchdown. They then go for two in a questionable call. Well, Traylon Burks has been brilliant all day. Eight catches on the day, over 100 yards. But in this route where your quarterback is in the gun, you have to be more deliberate with your release because the quarterback can't throw it to you early enough, and it ended up costing them a chance for that two-point conversion. Another touchback to start this fourth quarter. Coming up next, we are off to Athens for the SEC on CBS for a battle of undefeated in the SEC East, the 11th ranked Kentucky Wildcats take on the new number one team in the land, the Georgia Bulldogs. That's coming up next right here on CBS. So we've been talking a lot about the West, but talk about implications in the East. Georgia and Kentucky Ooh. last two undefeated teams in the SEC totally. Well, I just hope my flight back to Atlanta has TV so I can watch that game. <laughs> That's going to be a fun one. High formation. Toss it to Bixby. He's got a lot of room. Good blocking, and Bixby stays on his feet. Finally out of bounds after a first down. Uh, look at Bobo getting old school once again. L left tight. 49. Boss, get the big boys out front. Get a fullback in there. I was just going to ask you to call the play yeah, because I go. knew it was in your lexicon. <laughs> He's Total changed play. so much, I really don't recognize a lot of the offense, but anytime you get an eye, I'll, I'll call those ones out. Total plays in this game. Arkansas has run 79, Auburn 38. But the Tigers still hold that five-point lead. Get it to Hudson on the quick pick. And Hudson bursts forward for an eight-yard pickup. Don't forget, later in the game, it's the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. So we're getting down to this fourth quarter. Last week for Arkansas, it was back and forth, back and forth against Ole Miss. This defense has taken pride this week in feeling like they needed to improve. They needed to show the nation that they're a lot better than what they've shown the last two weeks. And this fourth quarter would be that moment, although it looks down. like it's going to be a free play. Exactly. Knicks takes full advantage yeah. of it. Jackson on the outside, and he's finally forced out of bounds just inside the 35. And great job by Bo Nix getting the offsides. And Offside on the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first down. And if you question Bo Nix as a thrower, we saw one last week on a go ball to the left, but I still don't know how he completed it. But the arm strength to rip that football in there to take advantage of the free play. Uh, we're going to keep saying I'm a broken record right now, but 
He's a new man. He's 18 of 22. He's a new man right now, Bo Nix. He's 18 of 22, and they have absolutely uh, got the formula with him right now. Tyler Fromm, the tight end in motion. They'll toss it to Tank once again. He says, excuse me, past the line of scrimmage. Picks up two and bring up second and long. Brent Morgan drags him down. For Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, it is imperative you hold Auburn to a field goal try here. You've got to find a way to get the, this only to be a three-point uh, trip down the field for these uh, Tigers. Keep it a one-score game. Pittman trying to lead his team to their first win over Auburn in six tries. Under center, Nick's eye formation. Bigsby, tough running and a nice tackle to finally bring him down. Eric Gregory was there, got the initial penetration and brings up third down. Well, the guy we have not seen much of this Auburn offense today is Shanker, the tight end. It was really involved to start this season. Only one catch right now. He's actually not on the field at the moment, so listen. We talk about competition for Auburn's receivers. This is your moment to compete, to make a play. Critical third down. Looks like man coverage. Five receiver set on third down and six. Nix looking, lofting. Nix jump ball. It was over the head of Robertson, and a flag comes in. That ball was out of the field of play. Defense number 17. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, and that carries an automatic first down. Let's we'll see where this lands, and I'm with you, Coach. That landed a good bit out of bounds. It's out of the field of play. I'd love to hear from Gene what constitutes out of the field of play. Hudson Clark was the man who will be called for that penalty. 17 in red. And it sets up first down from the 15. Bigsby stays in there. Robertson, Jackson out wide. Shankers back in the game. And it off to Bigsby, surging forward. And let's get Gene and his thoughts on that last penalty. A lot of times, guys, on plays like that, you don't want to take the athleticism away from the player. They can elevate high. They can lay out a long way. And, and this one, though, I do agree with you. I think this is uncatchable. The calling official on this play, too, you have to take note. He's focusing on both players. He needs help from another official to see where that play is in relation to the contact. How does that help come? Does, does, someone, come to, does someone have to offer it, does, or can he ask for it, Gene? Well, you hope that somebody comes to offer it, Coach. You know, there's a couple other officials that once that ball goes in the air, they're looking into that area where the football is, looking for things like a potential target, catchability on a football, things of that nature. And you would want those secondary officials to bring that, that information if they have some for you on those plays, for sure. And right here, Shanker in the slot, one-on-one. -on -one. Man the man coverage again. Nix looking to escape, will not do so. Nix is tripped up by the captain, Grant Morgan. Great job by this Arkansas defense, bending and not breaking, holding him to the field goal. I was going to say to Gene, I know Sam Pittman wanted to help him with that call. <laughs> so it'll bring on Anders Carlson on the season. 11 of 14, 79%. Two of his misses have been from 50-plus. And a 24-yard field goal last week against Georgia. This one from 29 to put his team up eight. And the senior calmly knocks it through. 31-23. Auburn on the road looking for the upset on CBS.
comes a look at our Ally Bank game recap. Bo Nix has really been spectacular aside from that one interception in the first half. He's been pretty much unblemished. Traylon Burks, we knew that he was going to be a factor. He's been every bit of that and then so. Well, how about that Auburn defense? I love that last stat. I mean, Arkansas has driven the football, moved into their territory, but Ben, but don't break, only giving up 23 points. Both coaches looking to build culture at their programs, simultaneously winning. Guys, how about this? Another Saturday in the South. My, I mean, just an absolute great game. Fans are all into it. College football is wonderful. Can't beat it. Ten and a half minutes left in what should be a fantastic finish. And for more, we go to the sidelines, the great Jenny Dell. Well, you can hear how loud it is down here. We got over 76,000 fans. This is the second home sellout of the season for the Razorbacks. That first one being that win over Texas on September 11th. And Coach Pittman told me the home crowd, it was so influential in that win. And guys, the fans are getting a little feisty on this Auburn sideline. The coach is having to make sure these players are staying 100% focused on the game and not on the comments that some of these fans are making. Well, Sam Pittman has just been so great for this program. The quick turnaround already said that he felt like they made great progress last year and then continue to move forward this season. K.J. Jefferson's been a big reason why. A captain, a leader, not necessarily vocal, but leads with his actions, and he's going to look to lead another score and drive. Not a great start with Zacoby McLean meeting him right at that line of scrimmage. Coming up on State Farm College Football Today, time for permitting, Adam B.J. and Houston Nutt will have the day's best highlights and a look ahead to our next game between 11th-ranked Kentucky and top-ranked Georgia. All that here on CBS. This is where defensive coaches want to point out the targeting thing. K.J. Jefferson put his head down there to create helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, but rarely do we call it on against an offender. Sanders, nowhere to run. Leota among the first ones there and brings up third and long. And once again, back-to-back -back big plays by Zacoby McLean. Previous play, they want to empty out. A lot of times with Arkansas offense, when they go empty, quarterback draw along with it. He stayed home, was able to make the tackle. And another big stop right there on the second down. How many, once again, a third and long for this offense. How many times have we said, what a big third down for Arkansas? <laughs> Burks in motion. That's the man to watch. 16 in red. Jefferson on third and eight. Jefferson tucks. Jefferson stays on his feet. And he is dragged down from behind, about two yards shy of that first down. Chandler Wooten, a captain, a leader with a big play. Uh, he's going to need a few ice baths after this game, K.J. Jefferson, but he just is so tough to bring down. And, yeah, I agree with the punt here. There's way too much time left in this football game to be going from it for a fourth and three to four yards right now. Punt it. Defense has to do their job for Arkansas. Auburn is in a safe punt defense there. They're not sure the riverboat gambler isn't got one up his sleeve. Reed Bauer will send it deep and does for Robertson who had that 71 yard receiving touchdown earlier. Let's it bounce out of bounds. And Auburn will take over just past the 25 yard line. KJ Jefferson had the quick start to this game but it's been some tough sledding the last couple possessions for the Arkansas QB down by eight. SEC on CBS is sponsored by Zaxby's. Allstate. Just for men. And by the Home Depot. It's a party here in Fayetteville. About 74,000 fans on hand. It's 31-23, but all the fans here believe that their teams got the right stuff to win it. We saw Spider-Man. We saw a Chef. You never know what you're going to find on a Saturday in the SEC, and we have no idea how this final 841 is going to play out, but we know it's going to be something special between these two teams. Last two possessions for Auburn have been successful. That one play, 71-yard strike from Nix to Robertson, and then the churning field goal drive in the last attempt as Jarquez Hunter fights for a couple on first. The margin for error for Arkansas defensively is zero. They cannot give up points here and expect the offense to have to score twice. This is a must-stop down uh, series of downs here for the Razorbacks. 
was a big key coming in. Rush yards on either side. Auburn, quick start, but they have struggled to pick up yardage on the ground since. Both teams have turned it over once as well. Nick's barking out signals. will go out of the gun on second down and eight. Hunter again. Nowhere to go again. Great play by Joe Fouché coming off the uh, weak side. He ends up being a corner, but you can see these unblocked coming off this edge. No one gets him. He comes flat down the line of scrimmage. Creates a uh, great tackle and a third down. You're going to see more of this as Barry Odom realizes the significance of this drive. He's going to use a lot of what we call run-stopping pressures. Big third down and seven from the 30. Some confusion. And some movement. Ball start on the offense, number 77. got lucky or excuse me Arkansas got away with one right there you said it coach a lot of confusion defensively that you see guys move around lots of communication and 77 little flinch can't do it and, and Jenny told us that crowd out there is loud the new, remember the new face out there right Jalen Catalan not available today communication more important third and long Nick's over the middle he's got a strike for a first down and that's been the go-to, one-on-one in that seam area against these safeties. Greg Brooks, and look at Bo stepping in, confident throw, puts it on the body of his receiver. This is the film Bo Nix wants to send to the NFL scouts. Yeah. I promise you that. Tyler Fromm, big catch, fresh set. Look right now, those. they're going to go slow. They're going to milk this clock, continue to let it run. And they got Hunter, the powerful back, in the backfield. See if he can squeak out some yards. He's broken a couple of big runs this year. They give it to him here, and he just lowers the shoulder, runs right into bumper pool, the linebacker, and chugs forward for a couple. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today, and you can catch Jenny joining the HQ team after our game here in Fayetteville. And defensively for Arkansas, you've got to continue to be careful because you can get lulled into, hey, they're just running the football, but over and over again they've shown the zone read where you may see a tight end go to the flat or even Bo Nix use his legs as well. Second and seven for Nix. Quick strike, Hudson. Makes one man miss, and Kobe Hudson surging forward to the midfield line and a first down. This is why we get on airplanes and go <laughs> across the country to find players. Make somebody miss. What a great job by Kobe Hudson right here. Getting him first down for the Tigers. And getting more clock off this uh, scoreboard that's uh, spelling bad news right now for the home team. We always say it's not about the X's and O's, it's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Oh, I've said it many times. <laughs> There's a lot of Jimmy's and Joe's making plays in the ball field today, as you'd expect from an SEC football game. Yeah, but there's only one Kobe Hudson. Yes. Back to the ground, Hunter. You need multiple guys to stop him, but Arkansas has it. Bumper pool. Isn't that the greatest name? It is. It really is. Playing linebacker. Behind Noah Eagle. But yes. came, into the, came into the game with 61 <laughs> tackles. Of course, Noah Eagle's fantastic. Middle name War Eagle, right? <laughs> no. No? Scott. Okay. No truth to the rumor of that War no Eagle? Truth. No truth. No truth. Maybe one day. We'll see. For now, Jorquez Hunter trying to eat up the clock. Bo Nix with a season high in pass yards at 277 on the day. Free play. Second and eight. And Nix takes advantage again. Shedrick Jackson. Just right to that back shoulder. Another BB. Oh, and, and guys making plays. Receivers making plays. Actually didn't get called for. It would have been picked up anyways, but... You know, we harp on Bo Nix, but the receivers, we've seen maybe one drop pass today. And, and a lot of these have been contested, like this one right here. One-on-one, -on -one, time for you receivers to make plays. Bobo, trust them. A lot of positive film this week in practice and in, from last week's game, and they're taking advantage. Play action. Nix on first down. He is just in rhythm, but dropped. 
Luke Deal, who does have a couple of catches today, four of them to be exact, can't come up with this one. That gives you an idea of the athleticism of Bo Nix. Now, this is called a sneak route. He's late. He probably went a little too far down the field, but Nix contorts his hips and gets it back there. Probably should have been caught. Now it's time for uh, Sam Pittman to start thinking about using his timeouts. Well, also for Arkansas, too, it's soon you're going to have to start bringing some pressure. Because as we know, I mean, Auburn, you don't want them to kick a field goal either, so you've got to be able to push them back also and kick them out of field goal range. It would be about a 50-yarder from right here. But they're going to get a bit closer with Hunter, who dives forward to the 25. They'll bring up third down and short. Yeah, it's all out blitz right now. It's, you got to bring some pressure on this third down, push him back. And Auburn Tigers, they're sniffing it. They're feeling it. Still time to go on the road. See if they can change it up. But like I said right now, you're in field goal range. Have a chance to make this a two-score game. But I think you got to put the ball in Bo Nix's hands, see what he can do with either his legs or something quick out of his hands as well. This is where the head coach can help the defensive coordinator, saying, listen, this is the all or nothing down. Go for it. I've got your back if it doesn't work. If I'm, I'm running the football, if I'm off of light box with Bo Nix. Third and three. And the whistle was blown before the play. Play clock was draining. Timeout, Auburn. That is their first charge timeout of the half. So Auburn takes time. Eight-point lead looking to upset Arkansas on the road. We go from one Tiger to another as Auburn looks to beat their first-ranked opponent since their opener last year against Kentucky, 31-23. This is going to be the tenth play of this drive for the Tigers, amassing over five and a half minutes. No, before they called timeout, Arkansas had lined up in what we call cover one, which is a one free safety defense. There is no need to have a safety back here. This is an all or nothing down. Look for Barry Odom to get to zero, meaning nobody back. You can have enough numbers in the box and you just play man. You have got to win this down. You got to win it. You got to knock him back too. Make this field goal harder if Auburn does not convert. Empty set for Nix. Nix is going to run it himself. And Nix has got Nix so tough and a fresh set of downs for the Tigers and that's Bo Nix being Bo Nix doing magical stuff just enough of eye candy with the receiver over top and you get him on the move those legs that speed the determination to get the first down just putting the cherry on top of his performance here today three, three timeouts three timeouts still for Sam Pittman he decided not to use one there He's going to save him for downs one, two, and three here. And we've got movement. Auburn jumped off sides. Auburn jumped. Looked like Brandon That stops Kemsel. the clock. That's big. Now with this much time left, they won't rewind it. All start on the offense number 71. That's a five yard penalty. It will remain first down. The game clock will start on the snap. Big. Council's second full start of the day. Adds a few yards to the field goal, too, mm -hmm. huh, Aaron? Yep. Gets it back to the 25 yard line. Field goal from here, somewhere in the 42 yard range, which is well within Anders Carlson's range. Hit a 49 yarder against LSU a couple weeks ago. So, first and 15 now. Out of the eye, Hunter. This game really feels like it shifted with that sack, fumble, touchdown from Auburn. And we'll see if they can put the finishing touches with 2.37 left. Arkansas calls time with Auburn up eight. Now let's take a look at our GMC Game Changer. Barry Odom told us no explosives. They gave up nine last week. We got to keep them ahead of us, in front of us. But Aaron, this is some TNT. TNT and Bo Nix showing some touch and airtime down the field. Post routes, receivers making plays, running right by defenders. It's good to see this offense progressing, moving in the right directions. Receivers catching the football. Bo Nix on time and rhythm. 292 yards, season high for that young man who has been absolutely tremendous and just converted a huge third down for this offense with his legs a couple plays ago. 
Look for quarterback run here. Don't want to throw an incomplete pass if you're Auburn. Second and 14, they put Bigsby wide, and there it is, the quarterback run from Nix. He shifts, and Nix is gone. It's a house call and an Auburn touchdown. There's that rabbit out of a hat once again. What a game for the youngster who grew up saying War Eagle. Holy smokes. I'm surprised Auburn, uh, Arkansas wasn't ready for this. I, it, what do you think is going to happen? On a second down, you want to run the clock, and you're going to leave five guys in the box again, and not expect them to run the football. Again, it, playing with a free safety. There's no need for that at need, that point in the game. You know they're going to run it. They, they, they're not going to pass it on second down. Here's where going for two at the end of the third quarter can come back. It's now a 15-point game as opposed to a 14. Well, we just saw the highlights of Bo Nix using his arm. Now it's his legs. When they dagger in the hearts of these Arkansas fans. 38-23. Bonex second rushing touchdown of the season. First one a couple weeks ago at LSU. 16th of his career, also the longest of the season. This one from just outside the 20. You know, Sam Pittman, you can see here, there's five men in the box. That means there's a blocker for each of the five. They're trying to run a zone pressure to get some, and, and they and the, basically Bo Nix just runs the other way. Sam Pittman on our conference call this week said, hey, look, guys, I had to hire 56 people. I thought I had to hire 10 coaches. <laughs> there's a lot to know about being a head coach. Warren will take this one out, make it A.J. Green, who actually tries to show off that world-class speed that he possesses. Uh, you look at the standings right now in the SEC, and, and I guess, I don't know if we can conclude this one yet or not, but Auburn, only one loss in the SEC. Obviously, we've hit it on a few times, when Alabama lost last week, that opened up a lot of excitement here in the SEC, and Auburn gets Bama at home this year, so. The two teams above Auburn right there, Ole Miss and Alabama, yep. they both have monster games tonight. Mm -hmm. That Tennessee uh, Ole Miss game, the over under Welcome total back, is Lane. 83 on that game. Woo. You get your popcorn ready, Ryan. <laughs> Still 223 left here. First down for Jefferson, just a two score game. And the question is, did Burks get out of bounds there? Looked like he did. You're in high octane offense here. This has got to be, uh, this has got to be absolutely, he didn't get out of bounds. Just shy. So they run a quick play up the gut. Keep the pile pushing Traylon Smith. Kendall, Kendall Bryles probably has to get, let go of the running game right now with this much time left needing two scores. Well, I think if you can get the first down, you get the first down real quick because the clock stops, but you got to start pushing the ball vertically down the field. Jefferson pumps, fires, has his man Thompson circling around and inside the 40. That's a great job, great patience by KJ, getting through his read, stepping up in the pocket, then extremely accurate with the football. And 154 left. First down again for Jefferson. Pressure comes, gets away, and throws it away. Great decision right there by the quarterback. 150 left, approximately 146 now. You want to set a, you want as as the play caller, you want to get this touchdown by a, a minute left, so that even after a successful onside, you've got time to go down and get that second touchdown. You can't be in terms of small amounts trying to get the first touchdown, you've got to get this thing done before a minute is left on this clock as you try to break up your drive. Smith in the backfield with Jefferson. Second down and 10, just inside the Tigers' 40. Jefferson has had a couple of big plays today. Rolls, throws, and that was dangerous. Incomplete for Thompson. Well, right now, Auburn is dropping eight in the coverage and playing a, a type of Tampa two. You see the middle linebacker dropping all the way back to be the third safety. Then they're dropping a defensive end to take his spot there. A lot of Razorbacks standing around on that route. It looked like they were trying to get a quick screen into the boundary, and it didn't work, so no one knew exactly where to go. Long streak for Arkansas against the Tigers. Now a third down and 10. Crucial here. Got a couple of big conversions. Jefferson going for it all, and he overthrows Warren Thompson streaking down. Well, it's a little miscommunication. He went to throw the post, or he went to throw the go ball. Excuse me, Warren's running the post route. Had an opportunity. You throw it across the field, see if he can win the 50-50. 
And all of a sudden, last this is the ball gasp. game. Yeah. Last gasp right here. I they mean, get... you got to go to Burks. Find Burks, your best player. Give him an opportunity to see if he can keep this game going. He's not in the game right now. Oh, that's not good. They've got Sanders in the game on fourth down and ten. Jefferson lofts it. Knocked away. And that'll do it. Roger McCreary seals it for the Tigers. And McCreary has been phenomenal in this game. Had the big two-point conversion stop. Ball is late. That's a big boy throw across the field. you got to be on time and accurate. KJ lets it go just a hair bit late, and he's able to go out there and make the play for the Auburn Tigers defense. What a great job of getting ready, uh, licking your wounds from the loss a week ago to Georgia at home, having the kind of competition that they said existed on the practice field for the position jobs. Nobody gets anything. You earn your playing time. And to come in here in a hostile environment and perform like they did, especially falling behind, Tip your hat to Brian Harson and his staff and, and this entire team. And certainly to Bo Nix, three total touchdowns today. Bixby will get the carry and churn forward. Clock was moving. It now stops as Arkansas calls their second timeout with 1.23 left in the fourth in Fayetteville. Well, the remaining schedule for Auburn, considering it appears they are well on their way to a victory here today, this is a huge opportunity for Brian Harson ahead. Well, that schedule, too, a matchup with every the, the tougher games being at home, huge advantage for them to get Ole Miss at home, to get Mississippi State at home, to get Alabama at home. This is a team that's getting confidence and confidence every single week. And the bye week comes at a good time. They get to, to rest next week. If Bo Nix can stay in rhythm as we saw him play today, and just so you see the numbers, 21 of 26, we saw the touchdown run just a little bit, just a hair under two nine, to under 300 yards, two touchdowns. The one pick, they'll keep coaching that decision at the end of the half. But my goodness, what a turnaround from what we saw a week ago, albeit against the number one defense in the land, his composure today was off the charts. Well, the, the, the competition that was created, and you know, you talked to Bobo and you talked to Harson this week, and they said he responds well. He's not a guy that goes into a shell like, oh my goodness, I'm not getting all the reps in practice. I've been pulled in various games this season. He shows up to work every single day. He works his tail off. He tries to get better. And I thought today was the best game I've ever seen him. In three years, this was the best Bo Nix has played. The footwork, the timing, anticipation, it was special. It was fun to watch. And for Arkansas, hey, listen, I know you've lost three in a row, but a year ago it was three and seven, and the year before that it was two and ten. This can still be a really good year. It's a building program. Sam Pittman is the right guy at the right time. Makes us to see what uh, transpires the rest of the way for the Hogs. It is officially final. Six straight wins for Auburn over Arkansas. They go on the road and defeat the number 17 team in the country, 38-23. Bo Nick spectacular. Tank Bixby got things rolling on the ground. Had that touchdown, the 17-yard run as well. And now the updated standings with Auburn improving to 2-1 and in the conference and 5-2 and overall. I'm just telling you, Brian Harson is sitting there, and I told you. I told you if you trust me, this thing will work. They're going to get on this plane. They're going to feel good about where they're headed. The games down the stretch are going to be meaningful and exciting for the home crowd. It's fun to be an Auburn and Tiger. Get, and they got some guys on defense that are still banged up. And hopefully they get them back going forward, which will be huge for this team. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Sub. Starts with Bo Nix, and there are plenty of things to be excited about in Auburn. Nicks looks, he's going to run it. Bo Nix to the 20. He's to the 50. He's to the 10 to the 5. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown, Bo Nix. 23 yards. That may have just done it right there. Nix with his second rushing touchdown of the season. 16th of his career. Three total TDs for the quarterback today. Final score, 38-23. We go down to Jenny Dell.